live hey 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 what's up everybody um yeah r.i.p paul mooney man we're gonna talk about paul mooney uh later i i found a i found a great clip of um when i saw the when i saw the the note that Paul Mooney passed away. I thought like instantly I interviewed him once and it was one of the, one of the like just stranger. It, it's crazy. Like the, the, I'm going to play the clip for you. Like I, I, I still had the clip. It's from 17 years ago, almost 17 years ago on, on KSFM. Paul Mooney uh, was here in Sacramento. He was performing at the punchline. Uh, he was at KSFM. He was like in studio and he was like, hey, uh, we got to call my we got to call my station in New York. It's like, OK, no problem. So we called and. Bruh, it's crazy. You, you I'll, I, And I'll, I'll play the clip for you so you can hear what happened, man. But it's 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 pretty dope. I'm excited to play that for you. Uh all right all right pull okay cole okay cole we still ain't got those little we still ain't got those emojis what's up cole welcome to the show welcome to the show manny in here what up baby what up what up what up paul mooney was wild man he's probably the most intimidating person i've ever had a conversation with Game 916, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Kyron, what's good, baby? What it do? Oh, man. And he, uh, uh, yeah, for sure. That was always like, I think that's one of the reasons Paul kind of was the way that he was because Richard was always believed, you know, I think Richard to this day is considered the greatest comedian of all time. And Paul, I think Paul kind of got to the point where it's like, I, what do you mean? I wrote this. Uh, so I think that's something that, that, that kind of stuck with him. Um, like he's very dry. Like what, what, like the stuff you saw, like on Chappelle's show, and you know, ask a black man, like, uh, like his delivery. Like he's very, very, like that's his personality. That is one hundred percent his personality, and I think it's something people like wound up loving. Uh, but you know, for 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 others, um, it just sometimes it came across as. Oh, okay, maybe I, maybe I don't know what you're talking about. Then I I thought I knew their history pretty well. Um, no, nah, maybe maybe I don't know what you're what you're referring to. But um, you know, he always he always kind of held that that stuff with Rich, and he held that stuff out there a little bit. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing, man? Damien, was there a lot of maintenance with um, with regular braces? Or is it just kind of like brush your teeth and go? Um, yeah, it was. There was maintenance. It was tough. It was not fun. It was like a water pick, and yeah, not yeah. fun. This is always a process. Yeah, it's it's not fun. And we welcome you in here to the Wednesday, May 19th edition of D-Lo and KC. I'm D-Lo, Damian Barling. He's KC, Kenny yes, Carraway. Sir. We have a big show for you, we think. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Rick Adelman is confirmed for 3 o'clock. Uh -huh. The Hall of Famer, Rick Adelman, is is, is confirmed for 3 o'clock. We confirmed with him last night. Uh, but there are some people in the camp of uh, D'Lo and Casey who are a little bit nervous. Uh, he's, he's, the Rick hasn't been super responsive this morning. 
Though Rick doesn't really strike me as a guy who walks around with his iPhone in his hand waiting for texts and calls and all of that stuff. So um, as late as last night, we had Rick Adaman confirmed today uh, for three o'clock. So Rick Adaman is going to be here at three o'clock. Let's go. Uh, and just as big. Let's get some air horns for the Hall of Famer, please. Can we get some air horns for the Hall of Famer? Bonte Hill going to join us at 2.30. We can get hey. some air horns for Bonte Hill. That would be... Hey. That would be television's Bonte Hill. Of course, he's part of the morning roast over there on 95.7 The Game. But the Warriors are gearing up for a big play-in game tonight against the Los Angeles Lakers. Some would say the Warriors are gearing up for the play-in game tonight uh, against the Los Angeles Lakers. And he does pre-post and half uh, over there on NBC Sports Bay Area. Well, some would say, like myself, the Warriors and Lakers are preparing for a seeding game. Mm. Because both of them being in the playoffs. Okay. Okay. Whoever loses the night, they ain't losing to the Grizzlies. And I say the Grizzlies because the Spurs have no chance in hell. No chance? That's what they got? That's what they got? Wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, I mean, you sorry, Cheryl. I just saw the only Spurs fan I know in here. Hey, Cheryl yeah. Baltimore. Sorry about that, though. They have no shot. She have just no shot. she just logged out. We just lost the YouTube <laughs> viewer. Thanks for that. You can... uh you can join, uh, uh, actually, Cheryl's on Twitch. We appreciate Cheryl over there on Twitch. You can watch the show as well on twitch.tv slash ESPN1320 and youtube.com slash ESPN1320. Again, Bonte Hill coming up at 2.30. Rick Adelman scheduled to be with us uh, coming up at 3 o'clock. Uh, we'll get into the Kings today. Obviously, more uh, fallout from uh, what went on yesterday with Luke Walton and and in the various uh, press conferences. It, it It feels like there's a... There's a dream out there for this front office, uh, but how attainable is that dream? Uh, we will talk about. But you know, the, the the big story today, obviously, is the Lakers and the Warriors. They're not in a playoff series. They're in a play-in game. They're hoping to get, you just said, a, a, a seeding game. You think if the Lakers lose tonight, they're going to finish off uh, Memphis or San Antonio. And in your words, they're going to finish off Memphis because ain't no way San Antonio is winning. Uh -uh, so the same uh -uh. is true for the Warriors. One of these guys is going to be seven. One of these guys are going to be eight. Now, their game's going to have to be played for the team that loses. But this is a game that everybody has their eye on in the play-in tournament in its form in its newest form and it's probably the form going forward uh debuted last night and it was pretty freaking underwhelming um i was terribly disappointed that charlotte got eliminated um i don't have any desire to see the pacers in any sort of series mm -hmm. uh, and there, there's multiple reasons for that which we'll get to here as we move along we obviously saw a massive performance from jason tatum yesterday which is going to be the celtics best chance of winning anything is for Jason Tatum to regularly drop 50, uh, especially with Jalen Brown out. But again, that game, it was, it was an 18 point game. Like the game wasn't close. Mm -hmm. You had a hobbled Bradley Beal out there doing what he could. Russell Westbrook, of course, he's taking all of the heat uh, as, as normal, because I guess he's the only person on the team, but that's, that's fine. Either way, the game was terribly underwhelming in first impressions of the playing tournament. Eh, that wasn't it. So the game was underwhelming because neither one of them were close. So there's that. But I don't think you're going to see the real heat. I don't think you're going to see the real things till you get to a do or die situation, which is what you're going to get on Thursday sure. and Friday. Well, Pacers and Hornets were, that was, that was. Hornets, Hornets are in a, a, yeah, that is. But I mean. They kind of fell off. They, they, they were at a certain place with their season. And, and, and of course they fell off. They lost the mellow ball. For for a chunk of time, so you know that's 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 definitely a big reason as to why they fell off. But yeah, they're eliminated. There's nothing else. For, you know, the, the the Pacers are they're they're going to play the Wizards now, and and there's yeah. your your do or die game. There's your winner go home. You're right about that. And that one, I mean, the the nature of the game, it was it was a blowout from the start. Um, that didn't really allow for too much drama. So there would be some drama there. But I I feel like the the Thursday and Friday, that's when you're going to get some some real drama. You're going to get some real heat. I think that's where it's going to come from because now if, if you, I know Charlotte in, in the end of season was on the line, but the season was on the line. Like even if they won that game, it was to, a, to get to a chance to play this game on Thursday. That's not going to get you in Thursday, get you in. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just think there's going to be a different level of energy. Um, like I said, man, I mean, it's cool. It's cool, you know, doing this travel and stuff like that. I think then the reason why 
I always say get it in a, a location because you take advantage of that Final Four type atmosphere for the for the uh, for the NBA. Okay. Indiana, it, what is Indiana going to be rocking on Thursday? No. no, but I think Madison Square Garden is going to be. Oh my gosh! Like, Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. It, Thirteen thousand in the garden for their playoff game. I saw some. I saw a couple other things. Um, I forgot what I was reading. I wish I could remember exactly what I saw. Where I was like, "Yo, we're done." <laughs> like this thing, according to some people, is done. No, it was the Vegas Knights game. Was that the playoffs or something like that? Yeah. They were, did, did, bro, did you see that? Did you see the crowd? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see it. No. Oh my gosh. Well, God, to some people, we are done. We are done. Done. Well, some states are further along than others. New York w- wouldn't have been one that I had picked to be further along than others. Many have said ca- California wouldn't be, and California is 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 very far along. So that's that's what I saw. I saw New York is about to, just like California did, take away mask mandates for okay. indoor and outdoor stuff. I mean, at some point, we've got to get there. Like, I, I don't know what else. Are we like, ready, though? I don't know, dude. I am freaking talk sports for a living, man. I have no idea. You know I'm conservative by nature. Let's We've been hold off just a little bit. careful Jeez. with that word conservative. <laughs> like, let's, <laughs> let's, let, I, I, hey, <laughs> if we're there, shoot, let's go. If, if we're ready to put, uh, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13,000 inside the Chase Center, Inside the Staples Center for the Lakers of the Clippers, like let's go, like whatever. I ain't gonna be there. <laughs> Damn it. I'm Magic we, Johnson. I ain't gonna be there. Can we wait till Fourth of July? Didn't you say Fourth hey. of July? Can we wait that long, please? I didn't say Fourth of July. <laughs> Someone else said uh, the Fourth of July, but that, I, I guess we're getting impatient and 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 maybe. Dude, I I don't know. Just uh, here, here, here's the right right on topic. The Los Angeles Times. Push notification comes through. Two thirds of California adults are now at least partially vaccinated for COVID nineteen. That's close to the number that they wanted. So, <sighs> okay, load them up. Hey, it, load it them up. A, them in the also, show them uh, in the chase center. I know, I know, it was Texas, but I loved how um, they tried to pass off that Canelo fight as an outdoor event or oh, something like that. Sakes. There was seventy three thousand in there side by side, no mask mandate. Yeah, outdoors. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you don't you recall though. Jerry said the the ventilation. That's right. In AT and T Stadium, built, he built ten he, years he, before this. He's he, right. He it. built a COVID ventilation system inside uh, the AT and T. Jerry, always oh, thinking ahead. The COVID <laughs> ventilation system. He was the only one who had it. He was the only one who knew this was going to happen. Uh, so good for him for getting this done. But yeah, we, we're we're going to see. I think think by the NBA Finals. We're gonna see some. Uh, we're gonna see some um, packed stadiums. We're gonna see some packed arenas. Excuse me. We're gonna we're gonna see some capacity crowds. We're gonna see some playoff atmospheres. We are, if you will. And, and look, as as nervous as I am, I'm excited for it to come back. Like if everything's safe. And I, I, lo- I missed it. I missed it. Now that I think about it, what? Why wouldn't Brooklyn? Look like, like Brooklyn and like the the, the Barclay Center and the. The the Madison yeah, Square I'm, Garden they're 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 a walk away from each other a yeah. long walk is a walk <laughs> like, yeah. what, why I, mean, uh, I think they will I, I I'm just assuming they haven't announced it yet oh, okay like That's Jesse's saying that assumption. the Celtics are going uh, full capacity May 29th so Damn. there you have it <laughs> That's, <laughs> full but, capacity Massachusetts from zero to a hundred. <laughs> COVID's on that Tesla boy. They're on that. They're, they're on that hundred and eighty thousand dollar Tesla. Like, hey, let's let's get there as fast as we can. Uh, and that's what Jason Tatum did last night. Or it, any chance at all? I know how you feel about Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Any chance at all for for Boston to get the job done against Brooklyn? Get what job done? Win a game or two? Yeah, sure. Three. Well, that's the job you're talking about, right? I'm, I'm talking you, about you ain't talking about the series. You couldn't possibly be talking about the series, Damien. I'm talking about the series, Kenneth. Is there any chance that can, can they get one win? Sure, they can get one. Two. Win. Mm, we're reaching now, but sure, sure. I'll, I'll even say would any would it, would would it be at all different if Jalen Brown was healthy? Yeah, if it was, okay. if Jalen Brown was healthy, I'd say. They had a small chance of winning the series. They got a better chance of pushing it to seven. More realistically, maybe six. That's what I would say. But, I mean, 
they beat up Boston all year without with Jalen uh, Brown there. So yeah, it, it's 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 going to be difficult. Like they 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 got the win last night. You know I you know how I feel about Russell Westbrook. You know I'm rooting for the Wizards, but that's not a good team. They're mm-hmm. fun to watch mm-hmm. uh, because of Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal is a percentage of Bradley Beal. Right now, he's just like Bradley B. He doesn't even got the EAL right now. He's just he's Bradley Brad. B. He's not he, Bradley. Dude, he, right. Very true. He 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 Brad. He Brad Beal right now. Cause it, it, it and it's okay. Like he's 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 playing through this. He's trying to gut it out, but you see it. Uh why Russell Westbrook is taking all the heat today, given the fact that Bradley Beal didn't play well yesterday. Is I, I guess it's just easier to hate Russell you know, Westbrook I, than yeah, Bradley you know, Beal. And Russ didn't play well yesterday. He no, he, I well. mean he he. he yeah, he, like he didn't shoot. Well. He I mean, really doesn't. Yeah, but I'm not saying he deserves. I'm just saying, like, what do I always say, Damien? Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Yeah, that's all. I is. just hope they beat the Pacers. That, that's that's yeah. I, I don't. Talk, I, I don't need to see the Pacers a, in a series. Want to talk about series? I won't be watching. <laughs> Sixers Pacers. Yeah, that's a hard pass. That's <laughs> like let's get this over in two and a half. <laughs> yeah, let, let's go back to the mid nineties five game series. Yeah, Mr. let's get Fine. this over with. You mentioned what Brooklyn did to Boston this year. Uh, they won all three games against the Celtics. Uh, all three games that they played by an average of 15 points per game. Mm. Uh, the Nets also outscored the Celtics 61 to 25 in fast break points. Uh, mm. Kimball Walker didn't play in two of the three games. And Kyrie Irving averaged 30.7 points much. per game and 7.3 assists per game. <sighs> I'm boy too much. Damien, I got a question for you. Mm-hmm. And we can talk about this. I knew you after were going to do break. this. Oh, oh, I thought you were going on the other side, but okay. <laughs> you want to float the question out there? Or you want to save it? I'm going to save it because okay. I can't float it out there without having a discussion. So, but I, I got a question for you and for all the Sacramento, to be honest with you. Okay. I'm interested. We've got that. Uh, we'll dive into the Kings. Uh, plenty more, to, plenty to get into. We're just getting started. Uh, get comfortable, grab some food, grab a snack. Grab a beverage. We're hanging out here. Twitch, YouTube, the Odyssey app, and on Sacramento's number one sports station. It's D-Lo and KC here on ESPN 1320. Postseason basketball is here. Which means uh, you can mix up a little cocktail, kick back, uh, and watch some exciting basketball. Hopefully, a lot more exciting than we saw uh, last night. But we've got a main event game tonight, which means we got a main event beverage made with McQueen and the Violet Fog Gin. No matter what you choose to do with it, it's going to work perfectly. I recommend mixing something with a little citrus flavor on top of it because McQueen and the Violet Fog Gin already has a distinct citrus flavor. It's cooling and refreshing, kind of like the temperature outside. It's absolutely perfect. You can order yours right now at drizzly.com, or you could grab a bottle when you're out at your favorite retailer. Uh, if for whatever reason your favorite retailer doesn't have it, let me know. Let KC know. We'll let our man Ben know uh, that your favorite store is out of McQueen and the Violet Fog Gin. We'll get them the re-up. And when you mix up that cocktail, take a picture of it. Send it to us on Instagram, at Dilo KC and at McQueen Violet Fog. We want to see that. We want you to help us. Spread the word to the entire valley that the best gin in the world is McQueen and the Violet Fog Gin. After 500 years, it's time for a new gin. It's time for McQueen and the Violet Fog. Dilo McCasey reminds you, be responsible. Don't drink and drive. (laughs) Uh, Chiron, no, you cannot. But I will mention you when I do my read. There you go. Boy, this is a crazy stat. Shout out to Will. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Put that back up. Um, social media is really buzzing about Rick Adelman. I would have been, I was totally fine with it until Danny in San Francisco called. <laughs> I'm out here looking like DJ Academics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Really happy everybody's excited about this. <laughs> We're going to have to have a talk with Danny in San Francisco. Danny, are you are you watching? I, I don't even think Danny <laughs> listens to us anymore. 
<laughs> oh, Christina, the first text. Yeah, I right. Seen. That's what I'm saying. I just saw Christina <laughs> Warner's text pop up like, God, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, sure. That McQueen is bomb. It's bomb. You'll like it. There you go. Sure. Um, I, I've you know hung out, drunk girl a little bit. She's a beast. She she oh everything rocks. Yeah, that's the only way to do it. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> okay, it's the best way to do it. I guess maybe I I got to get a little little flavor, a little juice. Uh, we'll be having no back on the rocks. Yeah, um, you know what I do is I'll just have two separate cups. Okay. McQueen, McQueen in okay. one, and then whatever I'm doing in the other. So why do you do that? I just, I just prefer. Uh, that's just how I prefer it. Okay. I don't like mixing it. That's almost like me. I don't like my food to touch. Cause that, yeah, I know a lot of people like that. That's that's a that's a wild thing to me, right there. <laughs> that is it. Like because by the end, by the end of dinner, I'm scraping everything together just to get it off the plate. <laughs> I, I may do it towards the end, like, oh, this rice is next to the broccoli or whatever. So let me get it all together. But you ain't eating when broccoli, I'm making it, it off. that's my favorite. What were you my eating when one. when the right before the live stream went up? Oh, I had some Wendy's. Okay. <laughs> four for four you know what it is we do not <laughs> oh man Kenny Caraway gives new meaning to four for four. Got nothing to do with baseball. Got nothing to do with the free throw line. That's just how <laughs> Kenny rolls with the four for four. Uh, if you want to connect with the show. Deal, one of the best deals in the entire Western civilization right now. Okay. All right. 916-349-1320. Kenny eats like a teenager. Uh, <laughs> 916-349-1320. If you want to get in on the phone lines, of course, a great way to uh, take part in the shows. Go over to twitch.tv slash ESPN1320 or youtube.com uh, slash ESPN1320. It's where know-it-alls like Poker Pro Eric uh, go to just uh, share their opinions. Uh, good to see John Bull here in the chat. John Bull is actually back. He's, he's not. He's still on vacation. He's still using his paid time off from uh, running the chat and promoting the chat. But uh, John's in here uh, putting that work in before he gets back to taking pictures on the beach. So, uh, JB, we appreciate it. He couldn't take it yesterday. He said, you know what? It's best for everybody I'm involved blaming. that I just don't be here tomorrow. The chat was a wild, wild place <laughs> yesterday. And just by nature, because of, you know, airing the Monty McNair press conference, the Luke Walt press conference, and kind of the frantic pace that yesterday's show was in, mm -hmm. I I had to tune the chat out a lot. Like I would open it every again, again, we we can see, you know, there's a section on this screen in front of Kenny and I it has like comments, right? And it looks like mm -hmm. your it looks like your messages app on your mm -hmm. on your phone or your email app. But it'll say one, you know, two, three, ten. You know, if I close it, when it when I close it during a singular segment. And that number starts to get to like 60 or 70 or 80. Like I know something has gone terribly, terribly wrong and I ain't looking at it. Like the worst thing to do is to like open up the comment section and try to catch up because you're involved in a conversation. You, you, you're you going to in, in interject yourself in a conversation that started about 20 minutes ago and you're yeah. going to be completely lost. And they, they, they get to doing their own thing. or It's a whole community in itself. Uh, like, uh, people hop in the chat that we didn't even know what happened to chat and start saying what they say. It's, just, it's crazy. I love it, though. Love there was it. A chat was fire yesterday. It was, it was, it was crazy. Definitely yeah. fire. I think it's where a lot of fans went to, to let out their frustration, which we're going to get to here <laughs> in a second. You said you had a question. For all of us. Yeah, man. So we're going to talk to our guy, Bonte Hill, at, at 2.30. That's 100%. Yeah, confirmed. we don't have to worry about Bonte Hill. You know He'll be here. Happening. Um, So we got that. And, and I, always, I always felt, especially since um, LeBron went to the Lakers, the Warriors and the Warrior fans, maybe not the Warriors, but the Warriors fans for sure, have been longing for this rivalry with the Lakers, 
They're like, yeah, like it's about time. We've never had a rival with the Lakers. And now we're about to have it because LeBron's there. We're good. They're good. Da, 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 da. And I sit back and, and look, they, they've got championships. Like they, they ain't worried about what I'm worried about. But I sit back and I'm like, no, the Kings have a rival. You guys don't have, you guys have a rival with LeBron. You don't have a rival with the Lakers. We got real heat with the Lakers. Now, whoa, whoa, my whoa, question, whoa, whoa, hold on. Hold, 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 hold. I'm asking, I'm, I think I know what you're saying, and I'm going to ask you. Okay. Am I wrong? There's a lot of people that believe there ain't no rivalry here with Lakers and, and Kings. There's not. There's no rivalry with the Kings and the Lakers. Absolutely So that's none. what I was asking. You say no. None. To the rivalry. Like Whatsoever. No. Now, can you have a follow-up question? Can you have... Can you have a one-sided rivalry? No, because then it's not a not a rivalry. Rivalry is it? it's just an ass whooping. No, okay. Well, no, I'm That's talking all it about, is. No, I'm talking about when I say one sided, I'm talking about where there's real heat on one side and not the other. No, that's bitterness. Hmm. That's not that's not a rivalry. It's bitterness. And it's okay to say that you're bitter against the, the, the Lakers. There's no rivalry. The the Lakers do not give a damn about Sacramento. About the Kings. Like, there's no, no, there's no rivalry there. So, the, so was there, there was like a stretch of what, like three years? Yeah, about three years. That's it. Do you, do you, would you, are you one of those people that said the Red Sox and Yankees didn't have a rivalry for like 80 years? Well, they're in more meaningful battles. Like, there, you, you could call that more of a rivalry, even though it didn't amount to postseason success because. The Red Sox, even maybe they weren't winning championships, they were still good. The the Kings haven't been good enough. You can't be a bad team and have a rivalry. I contend you, like that. the you know the Kings can have a rivalry against like Minnesota or like another bad team. Like they, they can't you can't have a rival like a bad team can't have a rivalry against a good team. Now look, the Lakers aren't coming into the to the season ever thinking about the Kings. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. But I do think because there's history there, there's something there. And I would say outside of the Celtics, the the intense vibes are probably probably third in the list of Laker fans. Whether the vibes are them just laughing because they're like doing the thing where they uh put their hand over the little kid's head and the kid is swinging underneath the arm. Maybe it's that. I understand it's that, but it's not um, the Grizzlies, right? It's not the Grizzlies. Okay. It's not Lakers versus Grizzlies where they don't even know you exist. I think there's something there. Okay. There's something there. I, I mean, I'm just saying, like I said, it's not, it's not um, Lakers versus X. Western Conference team. It's not that. It's not Lakers versus Mavericks. It's real heat. There's real heat. I I just I don't think so. You don't think there's any heat? No, I don't. No, mm -hmm. I, I I think maybe okay. I, I, I think I question. think you could I think you could rekindle it. Like if the Kings you know got good. Well, there's there's got to be something there to rekindle it. Well, yeah, yeah. Like there was a rivalry, sure, maybe like three years ago. Or, or not not three years ago, through, through a stretch of three years, mm -hmm. 16 years ago. But no, like the, it, it's not like they it's not like they continued to battle it out and, and, and they were competing in the Western Conference Finals year after year after year after year. We're essentially talking about one series that the Kings blew. And I know they played more than one series, but we're really mm -hmm. talking about one series that the Kings blew and one punch in a preseason game. That's all we're talking about. The most famous Kings moment really was a punch that happened in a preseason game. See, and the, get, not, not, not the most famous Kings moment, but like a, a Kings Lakers moment. You've right. got that shot. And then you've got like that punch probably will, will get showed before the Mike Bibby shot does. I, I'm and you're and you're not wrong. You're you're right with everything you're saying. I'm just saying. And one of these days you'll listen to me, Damien, because I told you I told you about the Knicks. I gave you the Knicks. I said, watch what happens if they get good. You'll be sick of seeing the Knicks because they'll be everywhere. Nobody cares about the Knicks. Nobody cares. I'm like, watch when they get good. No, 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 no. Don't do that because that's not what's happening. 
It's the same people who were talking about the Knicks before they were good that are still talking about the Knicks. They're just doing it a lot louder, which seems impossible that Stephen A. Smith actually got louder. But somehow Stephen A. Smith got louder. And despite the fact that Max Kellerman lives in Los Angeles, he got louder talking about the New York Knicks. It's the same people talking about him. They're just getting louder. Okay, he lives in New York, but he seems to love Los Angeles. Well, he's no, he's he's just the opposite. He's a New Yorker. He lives in Los Angeles. Okay, he might live in New York now, but he he lived in Los. I don't Angeles, even know right? where they do these shows from anymore. No yeah, clue. I just know is, they don't do this stuff in Bristol anymore. Max is a New Yorker. He he's a, he's a Knicks fan until like some Knicks fans were like, I can't take this anymore, and they walked away from the Knicks. And that but, was him. But now all of a sudden, he's back. <laughs> the Knicks are back. Jesus, <laughs> it's just the same people. So, like I said, I gave you that. I'm telling you right now, Kings, the Lakers, if they, I, I don't even have to say a playoff series. If they play in a meaningful regular season game that's like on TNT or ESPN, you're going to see the montage of every montage, every, it's going to be a 45 second montage and it's going to be everything that you can find in those three years. And it's going to have the it's going to have that the rivalry renewed Lakers Kings. I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen. Oh, I'm mad at you for the instrumental. That's hilarious. You thought that all the way down to the instrumental. That is fantastic. That, that's what's going to happen. So for them to do that, once again, they wouldn't do that for Kings or Lakers Grizzlies. They, well, Lakers, even, Grizzlies it, never. They, I acknowledge there was something there. It was just for a short. And the other reason, the, I think another reason that it stands out is the like game six will always live in NBA. Mm -hmm, game six mm -hmm. will live above all else because it yeah. calls into question the integrity of the league. Yeah. Um. But uh, it, sure, it it could be it it can be that that stretch can be rekindled. Sure. And I'm biased, but I think that was the best playoff series. Maybe until um, Warriors, Warriors, uh, Cavs, 2016. I thought the 2002 Lakers Kings series was the best series in NBA playoff history. Well, not in history, but you know what I mean. In the 2000s, sure. uh, up until that NBA Finals. So that that and, and people they may or may not agree, but they won't say it's like not in consideration. So it stays oh, in people's heads. Oh, it's absolutely heads. up there. Yeah. yeah. It stays in people's heads. So it, I think that'll be the case. I would even say like, because the Lakers and Spurs have history. I don't even think people well, would be as jazzed up for Lakers Spurs. It's because the Spurs are boring. No, well, there's that. I mean, that's why the Kings team, even though it was such a short period, like it was exciting. Mm -hmm. that's, we'll I mean, like people, like, 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 <laughs> like Miami. Yeah, hopefully we do get to talk to the head coach of that series. Uh, Rick Adelman allegedly joining D'Lo and KC at 3 o'clock. Again, want to point this out. We were fine. We were, yeah, Rick Adelman, this is great. Hey, you know, and, and there's evidence of this. Hey, it's confirmed. We, we good to promote this? <laughs> yep. Thumbs up. Like, okay. Get a call at 1130. And I hear, like, I, I, can, I can just tell in his voice. Like, oh. Oh, no. And he goes, so... Here's the deal with Rick and he lays out, every, you know, how this all came to be. Like everybody knows, you know, Rick Adelman. I mean, most Kings fans know Rick Adelman don't doesn't do a lot of interviews. And mm. it's like, dude, this is this is this is cool. Like we and this, by the way, this is after Deuce is like, wow, this dude, what a get. <laughs> Morgan, going nuts. same thing. Christina Warner. <laughs> God, you guys are doing incredible things, man. We're getting like all sorts of social media love. <laughs> like it's like, yo, this is yo, man, we love y'all. Thank you. <laughs> And then, um, so here's the deal with Rick. I, I mean, he confirmed, but we we haven't been able to get a hold of him today. And and and, and then Jesse's going to call him and he's going to text him, and we're going to do all this stuff. So again, Rick doesn't strike me as the guy who walks around with a cell phone in his hand. And I don't even know where Rick is. Does anybody know? I just envision Rick no Adelman idea. being someplace cold. Yeah, I have, I have like no he, idea where Rick is. Like Rick Adelman is not on the beach somewhere. Like nah, I, I feel like I feel he's like he's in Oregon or Washington. He, he's or got something. like a cabin next to Brock Lesnar in some like <laughs> odd wilderness place or something. Next to Phil or, Jackson. Or, or, there, <laughs> he's he's next to Phil. In the irony of ironies, it's called Championship Circle. It's just Phil Jack or Championship Court. It's just <laughs> Phil Jackson and Rick Adelman lives right just on the like outskirts the, uh, of it. 
It's like the the Heisman commercials. <laughs> yes, that's that's exactly what it is. Um, so we believe that Rick Adelman is going to join yeah. us uh, at three o'clock. We, not not we, not everybody in the D'Lo and Casey family is as confident that Rick Adelman is going to be with <laughs> us. But again, I have evidence. Are we good? Like <laughs> we're good. Yep, we're good. Yeah. Two hours later, oh, everybody was a little bit more nervous. Yeah. So we we got on here. I was hoping we talked to the coach because I think that uh, I say that there there is a rivalry between Kings Lakers. It's one sided as it may be. As much heat maybe on one side. I mean, L.A. doesn't really worry about much of anything. The only rivalries they have outside of city rivalries are Lakers Celtics mm-hmm. and Dodgers Giants. And I don't even mm-hmm. think they hate the Dodgers as much, or excuse me, they hate the Giants as much as the Giants fans hate the Dodgers. Okay. So they don't really care about much. They're at the beach all the time. Yeah, I don't even consider, LA's not even a, LA's Hollywood. Yeah, it's not, like, it's, it, not it a, it's not a good sports town outside of Lakers and the Dodgers. The Dodgers is some real stuff. The Dodgers, it, it, it's, it's, it's got real history there, but Outside of that, like they're not watching. Like we talk to um, Danny in San Francisco about this all the time. This is a king's town, but just as much of it's a, a king's town, it's an NBA city, right? They they watch. We watch the NBA. Part of that is because we we don't have no kings to get attached to this time of year. So we <laughs> if we mm. like basketball. We got to watch everybody. But we can we if we wanted to, we talk about NBA hour. We could do an NBA show every day here in Sacramento and be good. I don't think that's the case in LA. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's the case. I think it's Lakers. Hell, they got another team that they don't really care about. <laughs> they do. <laughs> that's very true. That's it is very true. Lakers, Dodgers, USC football. Those are the things that matter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's all all very accurate. Uh all very, very very accurate, uh, but it's going to be a hell of a game tonight. That's that's for sure. Yes. Anytime you get Le- LeBron James in, and it's not a you, you know you're right. It's not a win or go home game. It's nothing along those lines. But it it it, it is a one off. This isn't a series. It's LeBron James versus Steph Curry. You know, two of the biggest stars in the game, and we're going to talk to Bonte Hill uh, about that game coming up, about that uh, matchup, about all of the. You know, the, the 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 Lakers are taking their cues from LeBron James. Anthony Davis mm-hmm. is taking his cues from LeBron James about how to hype up this series. They're all Floyd Mayweather right now. LeBron James is the NBA version of Floyd Mayweather. Like, he's hyping up a fight. He's mm-hmm. calling Steph Curry the MVP, and he's doing all these different things. And I'm not questioning the validity of that statement or LeBron's sincerity in that statement. But he, I am. <laughs> well, he said it for a reason. Even if, if, if you could question his sincerity if you want to, but he said it for a reason and it's to hype up this this heavyweight matchup between the uh the Lakers and the Warriors. So you talked about the Kings playing in a meaningful game against the Lakers and what that would mean and uh, 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 you even laid out the theme music and all of that stuff for the video montage which is awesome. But the Kings have to get back to that level first. Oh, yeah. And when yeah. you go back and you listen to Luke Walton yesterday and you listen to Monty McNair yesterday, Monty McNair, he, he seems confident. This is this is what we're going to do, and it's easy to be confident right now. It's easy to be confident today. It's easy to say we're going to have an aggressive off season. It's easy to say we're gonna we're 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 geared up to make some moves. We're going to go out there. It's in 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 and make some noise. It's easy to say our goal is to make the playoffs next year. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more difficult than execution. Mm-hmm. And I admire the brashness of of Monty McNair. And as James Ham said to us yesterday, that was the most. That was the boldest we've seen Monty yeah. so far as the Sacramento Kings general manager. Uh, and I like it. But as we talked about yesterday, and as you laid out beautifully, the expectations have now been set. It's playoffs or bust. And if Luke gets fired next year or during the year, mm-hmm. that is a huge mark on Monty's record because he could have done it this year and he chose not to, which means he made the bad decision now. So in theory, all of this sounds great. But in order to get back to that 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 game you were talking about, in 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 order to get back into a meaningful situation, all of these plans that that they have in their mind, they're going to have to execute them to perfection. And like I said, that's a lot easier uh, in theory than it is in practice. And well, see, at the end of the day, to me, it's all about 
winning and it's all about the end result. So you laid the scenario where if they're not doing anything uh, midseason, they fire Luke. That'll be a mark on Monty only if they don't make the playoffs. Because if they do what the Hawks did this year, nobody will care that he didn't care, fire Luke Walton in the offseason. Fair enough. So it's all about winning. And I look at I look at Monty and I listen to what our conversation with James Ham again and the things he had to say and listening to Monty's inter, um, press conference again. And, you know, there's a thing going around right now um, where people, you know, they, they get an actor and they talk about how good an actor was by saying he knew the assignment, right? Or she knew the assignment. And Monty, more than anything, knows the assignment. I just really got the vibe that he's like, he has to do it. He has to talk. He has to answer questions. He knows that's part of the game, but he's like, none of this matters. None of it matters. I know the task at hand. I know the assignment that's laid out in front of me. It only took me six or seven months being here to know like, Ooh, patience ain't going to work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> patience ain't going this. That's not the answer here. Mm-hmm. I need to get this done right now. And he's like, I need to get it done right now. I need to win. I need to get to the playoffs. Simple as that. I, and and I believe James Ham when he said, Mary, you guys listen to James Ham. Listen to James Ham. Because he told you. He said, when I talk, when I say something, it's not because I'm just hypothesizing about it all the time. Pontificating with James Ham. Pontificating, right? <laughs> I, I, it's because I've talked to the people in charge and I got an idea of where their mindset is. So if James is like, yo, they need to make a move. They're going to be looking to make a move. Rest assured, Monty's going to be looking to make a big move. And I've, I've zeroed in on one. I have completely zeroed in on one. Oh, do share. By the way, sometime this summer, we're going to do an entire radio show live from James Ham's bar. Absolutely. We'll bring McQueen and the Violet Fog and the Luke yeah. Belair and all that. But, but like we, we, we text about it after the show when he sent those pictures. Like, dude, we're going to do a, an entire show from your house. Yeah. It'd be the three of you us. Down? It'd be awesome. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. We good. we good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, it's not a surprise. I tease it a little bit on Twitter, but if you've been listening to D Lo and Casey, you know where I'm going with this one. I'm fixated on this Pascal Siakam thing. And I hope Monty is too. I think it's perfect. I think it takes care of uh, a couple of needs that the Kings need. You think it's perfect for the Kings though. I think it's perfect for the Kings. I think it can be ideal for the Raptors. And the way you would make it ideal for them is you got to overpay. Like it may be a situation where it's Bagley, Buddy, this year's first and 2023's first. Mm. And that may be a lot. I'm not, I'm not disputing the fact that may be a lot. That may be quote unquote too much. But if you got me a guy, an all-star, whether you want to say he's a true all-star, borderline all-star, whatever, he's close enough. He's pretty durable. He's good. I'm, he mat- everybody want to talk about the timeline. He matches up with the timeline. He feels a need at that power four position, offensively and defensively. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to overpay. I'm willing to overpay. I think he was the NBA most improved player in 2019. He was all second team in 2020. He was an NBA all-star in 2020. And of course he was uh, an NBA champion. And I I think this is a a good role for him, a good place for him because I got my concerns about Pascal. Like people thought when um, Kawhi left, they're like, not that it's cool, but they're like, okay, well, Pascal said, I can slide into my role in, in Toronto. will be straight. And well, I think it was that, sorry, go ahead. No, I was and and they thought everything would go seamlessly. Well, I think it was, it was also they got a championship, so it was like, okay, if we're set back a little bit, like it's fine, like because we already got we got what we came for with Kawhi, so we're good. That too, not that but, they didn't want him, not they didn't want to keep this going, but it was it's easier to digest a player leaving Kawhi, mm-hmm, Toronto, mm-hmm. LeBron, Cleveland after you've already won. Well, I'm even talking about people around the league to cover the game, talk about the Raptors. They're like, oh, Kawhi's not there. That's going to suck. But they got Pascal, Mm -hmm. and he's going to be ready to take that leap. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say he didn't. No, it's not hard to say. He didn't take that type of leap. He's still good, but he might have showed that he's not a number one. He's not a franchise guy where you center the franchise around. He got paid like that, though. He got paid like that. 
But if he came to Sacramento, he, I think he'd go more into that two, three type role as far as pecking order on, on the roster. You wouldn't have to be that number one. And I think that's a perfect place for him. Complimentary to De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton. I'm locked in on that deal. I'd be, they'd have to, they'd have to block my number, and then I'd call from a different phone if I was Monty McNair. Yeah, I'm like, we let's do this. You let's really do like this one. I felt like you were. You, have you been talked out of CJ McCollum? Because you I, really kind of have been talked out of, and okay. and CJ CJ doesn't. I I already acknowledge that he didn't fit. Right, mm-hmm. he didn't fit with what that roster was because I like CJ a little bit more than James Hand and other people. Like if, if they didn't have Tyrese Halliburton here, I'd be like, let's get CJ. You know what I mean? But you got Tyrese they there. Yeah. Yeah. So he, there's no, there's really no need, but yeah, I'm in on this, on this Pascal Siakam. One. There's another one also that I'm kind of looking at too. You're really banking on this Nick nurse Siakam thing being like this, this alleged, I don't. I don't think it's alleged. It 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 happened. It's been written about and talked about. You you're really banking on this being a a definitive moment for that organization. It, it is. There's there's part of that, and there's part of the fact that they pay Siakam a lot of money for somebody that I don't think is franchised like that. Like they pay him like a number one. I don't think he's a number one. And if I'm Toronto, even if he is your number one, they're they're not. That's not getting them where they want to go. There, there's a. They've had their run. It's time to reset just a little bit, and you can accelerate that reset by getting somebody like a Buddy Hill, taking a chance on somebody like Marvin Bagley, and getting the first. You're gonna have two lottery picks this year to go with Fred Van Fleet. Like that's a little bit of an acceleration. It's not a complete tear down where you're OKC. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you got assets, you got players now without Siakam there. There's a level of, of, of cap room there, a level of it to a degree. They still got to pay OG. If I'm them, I'm looking to pay OG and, and move off of uh, Siakam. There's also a really important figure that you haven't mentioned yet that they need to get fixed. Hmm. Messiah Jiri. Yeah. His contract's up. Yeah. Like now. You need to get that situation uh, dealt with as well. We'll look at some other targets, potential targets uh, for the Sacramento Kings, and we'll get back to the James Ham remark about trading multiple first-round picks. Like, would you be okay with that? And Marvin Bagley was an interesting non-topic yesterday. Uh, We'll discuss that as Dylan and Casey continue here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. We're clear. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. We're going to take this right up till three o'clock. Oh, man. <laughs> you know i um i had an epiphany um i don't know if this is classified an epiphany or not but you know for the longest time i wasn't really a chris brown guy um uh, mm-hmm. Just wasn't. I, I thought he was a little overrated. But the last, I don't know, three, four years, I'm like, jeez, this guy is it's a bad boy right here. <laughs> this is a bad oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. He's a bad boy. My, my knock was always he couldn't make really good albums. Uh, but, man, he can make a hit. He can, he can make a hit, and he can hop on a track and change the track. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he's, 100%. He's, he's popped he's up on he popped up on one of Rick's. I was listening to Rick the other day. I was mm-hmm. listening to the Essentials, and he popped up on one. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, man, he's he's got that voice. Yeah, he's got. And that now voice. Jazz says I'm a full fledged Chris Brown stand. Okay, she might okay. not be wrong. Okay, <laughs> I get in that Chris he's Brown Essentials. I'm wondering why. <laughs> I get in Chris Brown Essentials, boy, and I'm. 
I'll be I'll be grooving. I mean, when he I mean, no guidance and and heat. I mean, those might be two of the best songs he's ever made. Mm. We can talk about this uh, too, Ramsey, because I've seen people talk about Tobias. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll break that down. Nothing like being nervous for two straight hours, three straight hours. <laughs> We're trying to cushion the. This thing has been retweeted thirty-one times. Like the way it. the way that is uh, in your hand and in the camera, it looks like a two-way. And I was like, wait. Oh, it sure does, huh? I said, what? what? <laughs> I brought it back. I, I searched it out after that match, after I posted that pic of the macho man. Like, hey, hey, let's bring this bad boy back. Beam, beam me your contact. Beam me your contact. You used to put on the AOL chat. You used to you used to put the two ways right next to each other and it'd send it send the contact. <laughs> See two brothers standing next to each other like, hey, yeah. hit me. That is a throwback. You guys weren't outside. You guys mm -hmm. weren't outside. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Early 2000s. And I have the sidekick. Just you heard of the sidekick? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Sidekick was fire. Flipped open. Was fire. Because you used to pull that joint out your pocket. Bam! One hand. <laughs> Scream with flip. Boy, and you was that dude if you had the white one with the Dwayne Wade logo on it. My favorite. No, y'all wasn't outside, man. Y'all wasn't outside for that sidekick era. Oh, oh, let me aim you. Let me aim you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the razor. <laughs> the razor is back. You used to get the razor and just. <laughs> it's like pop it. Yup. Uh, the... <laughs> the... That'd, that'd be a travesty. That would be a travesty right there. The thinnest dag on phone. I remember <laughs> I got I got that trio seventy five hundred when it came out. No, it was it, it was it was a trio seven fifty. Big old oh. like smartphone with a keyboard. Oh, I do remember that now. It's real talk, man. If you didn't, if you have never pulled a sidekick out of your pocket yeah. and flipped that screen it's open, as as that. Man, you missed it, something. You missed something special in the it, early 2000s, boy. It's as simple as this. Kenny's internet, if by the way, is still have, in the early 2000s. Oh, but go ahead, partner. That's damn. all right. That's all right. If you didn't have a sidekick, you weren't outside. It's simple mm -hmm. as that. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Yeah, that was legit. I hated it too. It was trash. <laughs> like it was it was straight up it was it was straight up trash i remember hey bro, upgrading what's your aim, what's yeah, your it was, aim? It, i thought i thought i thought the metro call two-way was way way better um and then like my man john like i had that trio seven <laughs> i was waiting for that trio 750 to come out boy i was all over it now, the big that screen, thing. The, now i remember with it with the, the stylus, stylus yeah, yeah. Ah, Man, if you missed out on the early smartphone you era, weren't outside, Bruh. you weren't outside, man. The the joint that I had that I really liked was the uh, I had the blackjack. Did you you know is blackjack sound familiar? Kinda. It was almost like the trio, but it's no stylus. Um, but they had the keyboard with the screen and all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was lit. It was lit. I remember doing an appearance at Sprint with Mike Bibby. <laughs> And Mike comes through with uh with the with the team dime crew and and I was friendly with Mike at the time and we were you know we were doing this 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 appearance together the autograph signing I'm doing the radio portion of it and he gets in there he, he he's getting phones for the whole crew right and they get this big ass block phone that operates off of micro <laughs> like like Windows or something like that it like this is blue screen it's enormous. it's it's it, it like it, it's giant. It, like was it's that the one that pushed up the screen, pushed yes. up and had a keyboard. Yeah. Yes, that it was, was that phone. phone. That was yep. a big ass phone. <laughs> yep, it was that one. And it it's like too. Mike, no, no, Mike, Mike, I don't think you're gonna like that phone. He was like, "Yo, this is dope. Look at." It. I was like, "Mike, you ain't gonna like that phone." He gets it. 
Man, th- th- three weeks later, we're out. With, we're 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 at that Gold's Gym in the Thomas with uh, uh, Albi and Connie, and he's like, "Yeah, I, I I got rid of that joint. They got rid of that <laughs> joint so quick, man." <laughs> Them yeah, flip phones man. was where it's at. Marshall, Marshall knows about them flip phones. He's he's texting Marshall Harris know about them. He Marshall know about the sidekick. He better he stop playing. Outside. Better stop playing. <laughs> I know Marshall was outside. <laughs> uh, Rick Adelman allegedly going to join us at three o'clock. We'll all find out together. Uh, that's the plan. Uh, that's <laughs> it's not the plan plan, but it's, it's the plan. The- Fonte Hill, that's the plan. Plan. Fonte <laughs> Hill will be with us uh, at two thirty. Rick Adelman. We appreciate everybody who's uh, very excited on social media about Rick Adelman joining us. Really, I wish I could join. Into really excited. excited. Yeah, we're just going to be nervous for the next two hours. Um, but and then, and then, and then it kind of dawned on me, like, man, I don't think Rick really likes talking. But the fact that he agreed to it, it's like, yeah. I like, cool. He's gonna come back and hang out and sag and and, and talk with us. So. Oh, we're all going to be excited together. Yes. Um, when, when it's when three o'clock. going to happen. It's we're going to be excited. Three o'clock. I do have something cool for 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 the three. We'll save it for the three o'clock hour, just in case something goes awry. <laughs> we'll save it for the three o'clock hour because uh, Paul Mooney passed away. Um, mm. Paul mm. Mooney, if you're not familiar, he's your favorite comedian's writer. Mm. Like like it, it, you know how Dave Chappelle doesn't tell jokes. He tells stories that want, like he 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 makes you think. I mean, mm-hmm. he tells jokes like occasionally, but you know the, the 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 brilliance of comedians is like you know Dave Chappelle can often be dry, but he'll tell you something that makes you like really think about it. That that's Paul Mooney. Paul Mooney is very dry. Like Paul Mooney was a big influencer on you know the, the, the creation of the Chappelle Show. Paul Mooney wrote like extensively for Richard Pryor. Eddie Murphy, like every comedian you could think of, and, and and he passed away. And when I saw that note, um, that that he was gone, I immediately flashed back to an interview that me and my old radio partner at KSFM did. My old radio partner Willie Barcena, who was a comedian, he loved uh, Paul Mooney, and Paul Mooney is a very, very intimidating individual. Mm-hmm. Like, like. I can't stress this enough. Like you're very concerned. Like when you sit down to talk to him, but he, he couldn't have been more uh, demeanor, never changed tone, never changed, like nothing ever changed. But I thought back to this one moment where he was like, he, we had wrapped up the interview was done. And he was like, Hey, can we, can we do, can we do like a couple more minutes? I want to call my station in New York. He was doing radio uh, in New York at the time. Mm-hmm. And we're like, yeah, okay, because we I need to record something there so we could just do it together. Oh, okay, no problem. Yeah. He didn't tell us what was about to happen. So I'm gonna play that clip for you in oh, the three God. o'clock hour because listening back to it, it's 17 years old. So you hear <laughs> one, you hear early Delo, which is terribly embarrassing. Wait. It's just can't it's just wait. it's god awful. <laughs> it's more embarrassing than the picture with Macho Man and DJ Cool. <laughs> but like listening back to it, it's still one of the most mind boggling moments of my radio career. So we'll play that for you in the three o'clock hour. And that'll be the cushion just in case something goes awry, <laughs> just in case something goes awry uh, at three o'clock. You know, you talk about uh, Paul Mooney and, and, you know, how brilliant he was, a uh, brilliant comedic mind. Um, and it, it had me thinking about how, like, there are levels to being a comedian. Right. Just like we talk about like sports and athletes, like I was good in college, but the NBA level is different. Right. These guys are different, different. Mm -hmm. And um, I I noticed that one time because, you know, who was like unbelievably funny, who I wouldn't have thought would be very funny. I went and saw Tony Rock one time and I was like, yeah, I was just like, ah, it's Chris's little brother. No, he was amazing. Like he was hilarious and you could tell it's just mm-hmm. it's a different ballpark mm-hmm. like he he would be maybe considered no disrespect to him but like the 15th guy on the nba on an nba roster and he like killed that comedy club of a bunch of guys who are like g leaguers right but he's the 15th guy on the on the nba roster mm-hmm. and he clearly a notch above and it's it's crazy you never think about that with, with comedy um about how the the comedian that makes it to that level where you see them on TV, like they're 
pretty great about that is like I've talked to Tony before too. You know, we just have great relationships with. Uh, and the thing that I remember the most about Tony was I wouldn't acknowledge who his brother was because mm-hmm. I didn't know because he he kind of came in and he sat down and it was we didn't we didn't really have like a pre chat like he came in as the segment was going on so we just sat down and we started talking he wound up hanging out for like twenty five minutes we went long did the whole thing and he got up we went off and he was like yo man that was cool thanks for that like I appreciate it normally everybody yeah. wants to talk about one thing and that's kind of something you know in the back of your head when your brother right, is. Right that famous it was the same thing with paul when paul came in it was like don't talk about rich mm-hmm. don't talk about richard Pryor. like just talk about paul mooney talk about what he's doing if he brings anything up let him bring it up but yeah. don't talk about him because it takes away from it's 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 something man and comedy is weird because you have so many really 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 talented people who aren't mm-hmm. on the stage mm-hmm like mm-hmm. the amount of people that you have writing for you and working for you and doing all those different things who don't get the same love that you do. And it's got to be difficult when you see a joke go over in front of a state. Like I think about Kevin Hart's writers and you see a joke go over in front of a like in front of, you know, a hundred thousand people in a stadium in America. Yeah. And you're like, that was my joke. <laughs> <laughs> Could I have been the guy who was out there on the stage? And like, I literally wrote that joke. Yeah. Um, so I, I it, it, it's it's a it's a weird world. It is. It is. You see that with music too. Like, there's no guy behind the scenes of LeBron James. No, going, like, no not at that all. was like, my jumper. Was, he, just, he just did my jumper. That was my windmill dunk that he, he stole. Like, I no, hate. sir. No, sir. Music's the same way though, because. I think about that all the time with somebody like Beyonce and I love Beyonce, right? Beyonce don't write all her stuff, Mm -hmm. but I'll just throw a name out there. And I know they got beef. Carrie Hilson can't perform a song like Beyonce, Mm -hmm. right? She may be able to write it. Ashanti was a a big writer too. Ashanti may be able to write it. She can't do that song like Beyonce. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a, it's a really weird dynamic. Derek Allen, DOA Sacramento guy. He writes songs. I remember him specifically mm-hmm. telling me about a song. I think he wrote it for, I, I hope I don't get this wrong. I think he wrote it for Usher mm-hmm. and he gave it to Usher and Usher, like he tried to, he said, this song's too powerful. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think Joe wound up doing it. I'm going to have to confirm that, but he's I written a lot of, Joe he's wrote, he's written a lot of records for Joe. So, what y'all know uh, about Joe? Y'all weren't outside then either, boy. Y'all weren't outside when Joe was doing his thing. So to use an analogy from our partner, there's a lot of names on the test when it comes to comedians Mm -hmm. and when it comes to uh, performers, when it comes to artists, there's a lot of names on the test. When it comes to sports, there's there's just yours. And and now Monty McNair's name is on the test. His name is on the test of the Sacramento Kings. Uh, You listen to D'Lo and KC on ESPN 1320 KIFM, West Sacramento KRX Q HD2 Sacramento and Odyssey Station and driven by Lashers, Elk Grove Dodge. He's Kenny Carraway. I'm Damian Barling. We're expecting Rick Adelman to join us at the top of the three o'clock hour. We know Bonte Hill is going to join us uh, at 2.30 to talk about the Lakers and the Warriors tonight. But we're talking about the Sacramento Kings and we're talking about Monty McNair uh, Mm -hmm. putting his name on the test. And we know that you're you're riding this Pascal Siakam idea, uh, mm-hmm. uh, understandably, because we we t- Toronto's got some things that they've got to figure out within their organization. It starts with Masai Ujiri, and then they're going to kind of have to work from there. And Masai told uh, Masai Ujiri told uh, the Athletic today, or he it, it was printed in the Athletic today. Like there are some things that I'm going to want to hear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, if they want me to, there are some things I'm going to want to hear, and. I don't know what those things are. Yeah. I don't know if those things involve Pascal Siakam or not. So right. we know you love that deal, but what's the backup? Okay. Like, because we, we think the Kings are going to have an, the, the Kings essentially are to tie in Rick Adelman in the hall of fame class. They're trying to land Chris, mm. right? They're trying to land, you know, this Chris Weber. They're trying to land that star who they didn't draft. They're trying to land that star who they didn't develop. And they're trying to land the guy who can take this organization to the next level. Well, everything can't ride on one player. Who are some who are some other teams, maybe potential ideas? I know James brought up the Pacers yesterday. Yeah, I like that Pacers situation. I mean, he went for the for the gusto with Sabonis. But you look right, but you look at you look at a team that, well, this team is maybe they're vulnerable right now. Maybe yeah. they're fragile. I mean, I know y'all hate Russell Westbrook, but I sure as hell would root for the Wizards to beat the crap out of the Pacers tomorrow and hope Absolutely. that situation with Bjornson really explodes. Absolutely. And 
you know, maybe there's there's something to be had there. And I think I think that see, I look at Sabonis on. I think that Sabonis is a guy that you would build around if you were Indiana. Like I think you'd get rid of everybody and say we're building around Sabonis. That's what I would think. Sure. So I mean, I mean, look, if he was available, yes, you get Sabonis. You put in, you know, two draft picks. Like I, I, I don't know about you, Damien. I'm all in on on two first round picks mm-hmm. to get the job done for the right pick. Yes, yeah. I'm. I'm I mean, the right on. trade. Sorry, the right yeah. trade. I'm all in on that. And you guys know how I feel about this year's draft or whatever. But I mean, more importantly than than this year's draft is no disrespect to the young fellow, whoever that may be, but no 19 year old is going, not even Cade Cunningham. I don't think is going to help them get to the playoffs next year. It's going to be the X factor in them getting to the playoffs next year. Cade may be great for the future. That's that's awesome. Evan Mobley, same thing or whatever, but I need to get there now. And I think Mm -hmm. Monty feels the same way. So, you know that, and that's what the top five, pick. if you get somebody outside of the top five, they may be great. um, And they may be great, but it's, if they can turn that into an all-star or borderline all-star, I do that in a heartbeat. And I do that with a 2023 first rounder as well. So I like that one. Um, I like the idea of Miles Turner. I don't, I don't think he'd be as expensive, but I, I like Miles Turner in Indiana. That's that's a trait that I'm looking at. Uh Ramsey and a lot of other people have talked about Tobias Harris. I think that would be really good. I like Tobias Harris. I like the idea of that. I'm not sure why Philly will move on from it for Buddy and Bagley, especially when they have Seth Curry there right now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I don't, I, I know they, because they would be, the reason why they would get rid of Tobias Harris is they probably look to shed some contract. You wouldn't be shedding contract bringing in Buddy Hill. So I don't see where that would be going down, but I'd, I'd be, I'd be a hundred percent down with it. Um, I feel like one thing Monty's done before you continue is uh-huh. he's found gems that maybe we didn't know were gems. Like I know he used yeah. the term. I didn't love this, but this was his term. This wasn't made up. He was talking about bargain buys, mm-hmm. you know, when he, when he acquired DeLon Wright and Terrence Davis. And I think in, in, in one of his handful of media conferences this year, that was a term that he used. Maybe there's, you know, we didn't know at the time what a gem DeLon Wright was. Maybe you had respect for his game. Maybe the same thing with Terrence Davis. We we right. we kind of knew who Mo Harkless was, and I think he lived up to to that coming. Mo Harkless has been in the league like he's the he, he came in as Mo Harkless, and that's mm-hmm. exactly what he did in in, in mm-hmm. Sacramento. Terrence Davis, DeLon Wright, they got some different opportunities here that maybe they didn't have before, and maybe they were a little bit more of a focal point, and you saw what they were able to do. Mm-hmm. I don't know who it would be, and I'm not framing this for some big grand reveal, but maybe there's a gem out there who's in the starting lineup somewhere. But maybe they're not a focal point. They're not a, a, a Sabonis. They're not a Tobias Harris. Uh, they're not a Pascal Siakam, but it's a guy that Monty McNair in this front office really like. Maybe it's one of. Maybe there is a so-called bargain buy who mm-hmm. is that missing piece mm-hmm. for, for the Kings. Yeah, I, I mean, quite quite possibly. Um, I look at Atlanta and Jason, um, John Collins, John Collins. I don't know why I call him Jason Collins, but if you do a sign and trade with Atlanta for, for John Collins, you probably have to throw him in the bag, but maybe you put, um, Bagley in there for sure. I don't think they would take buddy, uh, but you, you, you'd take Bagley and, and have to be Harrison. Then it'd have to be money somewhere. If you're doing sign and trade. Yeah. I have to be, and and now you've got De'Aaron and John Collins making a lot of money together. And I'm okay with that. I like John Collins a lot. I think he's proved that he he can, I mean, it's all part of the market, right? Like the market dictates that he's going to make that much money. I don't know. If you want to Sean Holmes, same thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, the thing about it, like I said, is money's got to go back. And even Harrison Barnes, I'm not even sure they would take Harrison Barnes. If I'm in Atlanta, I don't necessarily need Harrison Barnes. You know what I mean? You got you got Hunter there. Um, so you just blew up your own idea. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking on the fly. Here. That's all right. You just, that's all right. We, we we work through it. We're going to shoot this one down. Not that <laughs> not that we don't like John Collins. It's just you can't do it in a trade. Right. It it, it, it that doesn't it doesn't work in that sense if they don't want to take anyone back. So right. Right. That's it, off the table. You can have Marvin, but you'd have to have a uh you'd have to add a lot more uh to that, and it's just it's just not there in terms of the the swaps between these two teams. Another sign and trade possibility 
that I'll send Bogey about. back in the ultimate irony. That would be crazy. Um, I, I'm looking at Dallas, and I don't know how this works out. If I were them, I would just pay Tim Hardaway Jr. But if there was a sign and trade with Tim Hardaway Jr. and Buddy Hill, and maybe you give them a pick because they're without a pick this year. I don't. I got to see what their status is for the following season as well. But um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do Tim Hardaway for this year's first round pick. I'm not. I'm not saying that. But maybe if it's a second rounder or a uh, um, conditional first rounder next. I, I, that still even seems like a lot for Tim Hardaway Jr. But um, he's a guy that you could have a three guard lineup if you want with him. I don't know if you really want to do that with Harrison Barnes. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's a place for for um for and I think we've got to move on to another one. I don't think Tim Hardaway fits either. Here's another one that I'm looking at. This is a pipe dream. <laughs> this is I love that you're dream. right on to the next yeah, one, man. That's, that's all right. We got we got another idea. I'm trying to figure out. I don't think so because you know ultimately I want Harrison Barnes to be at the three. It, it, Tim Hardaway works, by the way. You just you'd have to move it. It's probably probably Harrison that would have to go. In Man, this situation. That means him going back to Dallas. I don't know how that would work off too yeah, well. Another one that is really, really a pipe dream. And I doubt, I really doubt this will be an issue, but you got to look at it. There's some situation that I've got to figure out here. But Paul George, if the Clippers have another second round flame out, mm-hmm. they're crazy over the cap or into the luxury tax, which it doesn't matter at all for somebody like Steve Ballmer. Not a bit. Um, there's, they have no picks for like the next, no picks of any kind of substance for like the next five seasons or whatever. Might be trying to get off money. Might be trying to recoup That's picks. That's not going to happen. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just, not going to try to get off money. Well, the, it could be part of Has why signed a deal. He's got an option, I think, this year. Okay. So you got to figure out what's Paul going did. on. Paul did. Paul signed a deal. Paul okay. did. So there are people out there who believe that they may have to make a decision. They've got kind of the same situation. Pat Beverly's making like $10, $12 million next year. They can't move off him. Like we're They just gave Kennard a bunch of money. Right? You can't get off of that one. So there's that. I don't know. Maybe you package a couple picks. Marvin Bagley for Paul George. I don't think that's enough. But <laughs> no, it's not enough. Not. It's well, if you not give enough. them two first rounders, you give them two first rounders and Marvin Bagley, and it and, gives them the ability to sign somebody. But it's also it's also Harrison or Buddy. You're giving up one of them too. It's not just two first rounders and Marvin. Like, no, that's terrible. That's a Twitter trade. I expect better of you. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's terrible because they, they, what they're getting back. It's terrible because they're going to laugh at you. They're, they're they're literally going to laugh at you. Okay. Like you're sending me who? The kid from Duke? If Paul George. No. If if Paul George. And by the way, don't forget, there's one really important thing here. Mm -hmm. You've got to clear this with Kawhi. Yeah, but if you tell this is my point. If you say Kawhi, we got to move on from Paul George. We got an opportunity to go get Carl Anthony Towns, but we have to clear something. That's that. It's not. Oh, Marvin Bagley. Now we're set to go. That move would allow him to make another move. And if Paul George plays in the playoffs again, like he did last year, making twenty, thirty million dollars a year. Here's your best bet with this idea. That happens, uh-huh. right? And Kawhi leaves. Kawhi just says, the hell with this. I'm out. I'm not doing this with this dude. And he goes and signs with, the I don't know, Golden State. I don't the know who Knicks. he signs with. Yeah, there's like four <laughs> teams that Kawhi Leonard would sign with. But I mean, but that wouldn't help us out. No, it, it, no, but, no but, it, but, but it gives you the Paul George scenario. Because at that point, if they lose, if the Clippers lose Kawhi, it blows up. I think I think think the whole thing. If they lose Kawhi, you think so? Our list. 
I don't think they'd be starless. I think the best case scenario is Paul, uh, Paul George flames out. Kawhi's trying to do this with this guy more. Get him out of here. They move on from him. They use that money from Paul George to go make a deal for Cat or something like that. Mm, okay. That's a, but look, all this is a pipe dream, though. All this really is a pipe dream. Right? I don't think I don't think Paul George is. I mean, look at the Sean has the numbers. He's making 35, 39, 42, 45 over the length of that contract. And Sean, it ain't no hard pass for me. Like, if you can afford it, I'm taking Paul George every day of the week. Every day. Okay. I'll take Paul George too, 100%. But I, I think a very specific scenario has to. Uh, You're right. Has to, right. to to lay out. Uh, I'm looking at the I'm looking at Slack, the uh, the intercompany like text message system that we use. Uh-huh. Uh, we've got a message from Danny in San Francisco. Oh, gosh. It it doesn't involve today's alleged three o'clock oh, guest. Uh, it involves another member of that Hall of Fame class. Oh God, Yolanda Griffith set to Let's... join us uh, tomorrow at twelve thirty. Go. Let's go, yo. I had a number to Yolanda that was about 10, 15 years old. <laughs> so that's, that's good. Uh, Yolanda Griff is set to join us tomorrow. I'm going to reach out to you. See if we could spice that segment up a little bit. Yeah. Maybe get her on the live stream. Like maybe, that. maybe hang out, talk a little bit, tell some stories. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if we can get that done. I'll, I'll reach out to her during the commercial break. Jamie, how long have you had your phone number for, for a very long time? Very, very okay. long. I've, I've had my number. Coaches change their numbers a lot. That's true. Yeah. She's in a, she's in a different industry. Than yeah. Coaches, you know. coaches change their numbers a lot. Um, yeah, that, for sure. Uh, but yeah, Yolanda Griffith set to join us here uh, on D-Lo and Casey tomorrow at 1230. So two down, one to go, I guess. I guess there's only one more. We got a book. And uh do this for- <laughs> <laughs> Chris, come join the afternoon show in Sacramento immediately. Hang up. No, 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 not that one, Chris. We took care of that already. Not that one. It's the good one. We got you. I'm trying to get Chris on the on the Rick Ross vibe, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think he'd be down for 30, it. 40 minutes straight. He just did it with Sean Cunningham a couple of weeks ago. I, I got to text Sean. Maybe Sean put in a good word for us, man. We'll come back. We'll talk more um, about uh, – let's get into the game tonight. Let's yeah, get into the let's Warriors and uh, the Lakers. And, and how about must-see TV when it comes to professional athletes? Because I got one for you uh, that's coming up here as D-Lo and Casey roll along on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. What is it, 40, 43 is the next one? Yeah. Okay, okay. Peyton, you're not wrong. Who in the playoffs would fumble? I mean, Clippers are in there. Let me see. Let me, let me look. Let me look. Dallas don't have nothing on one. Denver's not blowing it up. Portland. Let's see a real uninspired. That's not what I was going to say. Covington, but nobody, nobody's looking for that. Nobody's checking for that. Well, the Warriors. I mean, Ubre. Nobody's checking for that though. Let's see. Let's go to the Eastern Conference. Uh, Miami, no. Philly, maybe, but I doubt it. There was a couple things I was going to go back here to. I forgot what it was, though. Damn. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. Somebody said something. I was like, oh, yeah, I got to go back to that. I think it was Bryce said something. 120 <laughs> comments up here, huh? <laughs> All right. Oh. I, always, hey, always what, does that have things. anything to do with the chat only, the only fans chat account you guys were going to start? I'm just curious. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! We're working uh, on it. How do we get Miles Bridges? I heard a couple people talking about Miles Bridges. I'm not sure how or why. Maybe a sign and trade situation. 
with the oh, where was with, it? With Sean, but I'm not I'm not sure how you get Miles Bridges. No. <laughs> oh man, I hope not. I hope man, not. Even if that happened, I'd still never put him in Scal Brady. Did we try Scal twice or yeah. just once? I think we tried him twice. We tried him a second time. I don't think I could even get anything. Yeah. Scal. <sighs> oh my. That's crazy. I'm watching this video and uh Grievous Vasquez is out here making big shots in the playoffs. I'm texting with y'all right now. We love you, yo. Yeah, for real. I used to sit with her uh, daughters, at, her daughter at the game. Her daughter got a baby. It's wild. It's time, and, time is a wild thing, man. I can imagine. Time is a crazy thing, man. I, I was just telling KC over on twitch.tv slash ESPN1320 and youtube.com uh, slash ESPN1320. I'm texting with Yo right now, Yolanda Griffith, uh, former Sacramento Monarch and Hall of Famer, uh, going to join us tomorrow at 1230. I used to sit uh, at the games with her daughter, Candace, and like we're texting out like, like Yo's a grandma, like Candace has a baby, like this is like... Yo, like this is it's it's crazy to me. And I see like I used to hold I used to hold Demaya Walker's daughter. Um when when uh when Zakara was born, I would hold I would I would hold Z at the games. Like I was mm -hmm. essentially her babysitter. And um, which is a whole other thing to think about. <laughs> but like she's she's like being recruited. Wow. She's about to she's about to go to college. That's Yo, like, how old am I? Like, what is happening <laughs> right now? Uh, and just got confirmation. Yo, gonna join us on the stream tomorrow, let's man. Go. She's gonna let's join us on go. the video stream tomorrow. Let's so be. we're gonna rearrange some things, man. We're gonna fall back. We're gonna have some fun because yo yeah, and I haven't yeah. gotten a, a, a chance to talk in a little bit, man. So I'm Danny, Danny in San Francisco. Well done, my friend. Good job. Good well job. done, my He's friend. The best in the business. He's the best in the business. You might be two for two. <laughs> uh, but we're all gonna find out together uh at one o'clock man so so that's fun by the way if you're watching on youtube can you hit the thumbs up man y'all are in here wiling out talking about creating uh only fans come on man i told you about the number whenever the number gets out of control i know something has happened the number was at 117 uh when we went to the last commercial break so uh go hang out on the chat man that's uh that's 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 wild. It's a wild place to be. YouTube.com slash ESPN1320. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash ESPN1320. Yolanda Griffith going to join us on the chat, uh, going to join us on the stream tomorrow uh, at 1230. Rick Adelman allegedly going to join us today coming up uh, at 3 o'clock. Bonte Hill, confirmed, confirmed, uh, going to join us coming up uh, at 2.30. So uh, a busy couple of days here uh, as we roll along. And I'll be anxious to talk about, uh, you know, with Yolanda, one of the greatest... <laughs> Obviously, she's going to the Hall of Fame, dummy. One of the greatest um, 
players, you know, we've ever seen in, in the WNBA. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this last year, man. And it, it, it was kind of, it, it's been confirmed, you know, the WNBA season is only a couple of games old and Sabrina Inescu is must see TV. Yes. The Liberty have played three games. In one of them, Sabrina hit a game winner. In the other one, she notched the 10th triple-double in WNBA history. She's the ninth different player to do it, as uh, Cheryl Swoops has two of them. Uh, and she's only the second player to have a 20-point triple-double. And I think the other one, let me get this confirmed. I think it was Lisa Leslie, but I'll have to uh, double-check that. Yeah, it was Lisa Leslie in 2004. Uh, she's gotten close. Sabrina Inescu's gotten really close. Tina Charles, I was at a game where Tina Charles in the stadium got a triple double. But after later review, the scorekeeper may have been a little generous with a couple of assists. Oh man, not just one. A yeah, couple. I think it was two. Like I think she dropped down to to two. I think she dropped down to eight assists. But it was like it. it but it, it was a good triple double. It was like a. a it, it would it would have been twenty seven. Eight, I think it was 27, 15, and 10. Mm -hmm. It wound up being 27, 15, and 8. Oh, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> writing. Folks in Connecticut I'm was, writing. They, they was trying to They was trying to get one by. <laughs> and it was funny because she knew it. She hit the pass. The pass went to Kara Lawson. Kara hits the three. And yeah. Tina gives the... She gives the, you know, the Kobe at that, like, she knew. She knew what it was. Yeah. They announced it. And, you know, later on, it was like, no, no. No, yeah, I'm riding you, from Tina. I'm right. You, you got a couple of them. You <laughs> you got a that way you got a couple, you got a couple of generous ones right there. Um, <laughs> I'm sure I did too. So what? Yeah, I mean, whatever. It's 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 whatever, man. But yeah, only ten triple doubles in in league history, and Sabrina Inescu already has one. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say she's probably getting a couple this year. She oh, got sure. close last year. She only played like six games last year. Yeah. Hell, I don't even think she played that many. She might have played like three and she got really, really close in her first game to a triple-double and it's like nah, this 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 kid is good. Like she's, in in terms of the WNBA, like she's must-see TV. Like if the if the Liberty are on, they might not be very good, though they're 3-0 and right now. They're a really, really young team that's going to be figuring things out along the way, but she's a player that you want to sit down and watch. That goes that, that goes without saying, and that's not even including her, her game winner on opening night. Right. That's why I, Exactly. I Must mean, see she, TV. She, she's the real deal. She is the real deal, man. She she can play. And that's, that's what's great about the WNBA is there are a handful of players that are must-see TV. And you look at the game tonight, and, 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 and that's the big intrigue for tonight's game, right? It's the Lakers, and it's the Warriors, and it's got playing implications. Obviously, as my partner noted, it's more seeding implications because you believe both of these teams are going to get in. But above all else, you have arguably, maybe not even arguably, the two most must-see players in the league in Steph Curry and, and, and LeBron James. Um, the two most, I mean, arguably, yeah, you, you can definitely make that argument. Those two are, are, are leading the list. You know, you can go down to a guy, um, like Giannis, you, you can go to, to, to me, Kyrie's on that list. You know what I mean? I love watching Kyrie Irving play. I love, I, I think I like watching Kyrie Irving play more than he's number one on my list. I love watching Kyrie. And that's no knock on Steph, none of them boys, but I, I love you. Kyrie. But um, Giannis is on that list. Um, for some people, hard on that list. For some people, yeah, Luca's on a lot of people's lists. I, I think Luca's not on my CTV. I don't think Luca's on mine, and Luca ain't on mine. James Harden, yeah, okay, not LeBron James. James, okay. and Luka, yeah. I think Steph. For me. And, and and maybe it depends. Maybe maybe it depends on the time. Like like Steph in April, he might have been the most must see like athlete in sports. Mm. Like because he's a guy. Like if it, think about what we're talking about. The Warriors are a five hundred basketball team, or or you know because of that stretch that he had, they're they're just above five hundred basketball team. Mm -hmm. They're not going for you know seventy plus wins. They're not going for you know probably MVPs. Mm -hmm. Few would say that they're even really in legit, con you know, competition for a championship. Right. 
but you still wanted to see what Steph was doing. Like how many times did Steph have an ESPN game or a TNT game or, or something like that? Hell, Steph could have a league pass game. And all of a sudden NBA Twitter is going nuts because, you know, he's, he's got 49 or he's hitting, you know, dribble, 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 step back four times shooting from the logo, you know, three pointers with regular occurrence. He's back to dancing after shots fall. Mm -hmm. Like it was, he felt like he was, he felt like the most must see TV athlete in sports. I could, I could buy that. I could buy that. Absolutely. People in the chat, um, saying Dame Lillard, you know, ah, you look at Dame that's the good one. Must see. I do. That's I a do. good one. That's um, a good one. And then here's a, a controversial one because, uh, no name. That's his name on Twitter, on YouTube says the joke rain on that that's list. creative though because it's got the no image next to it i like that that's well done over there on youtube yeah he says the joke rain on that list no and he's not now no. that does not make him not the mvp that does, that does not make him not a great player i don't look at the list of games in the day and be like oh gotta joker's see these nuggets play. play yeah joker's playing yeah gotta see him mm-hmm. no don't do that and 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 that's not a that's not a knock on Jokic because there's not a, like I don't think Kawhi Leonard's must see TV. Hmm. You're actually thinking about it. Yeah. I, Kawhi, yeah, I, I like to see Kawhi. Really, I like to see Kawhi. Like you feel like yo, I got to get, get yo the Clippers. Yeah, Jazz. I like the Clippers. Clippers are on tonight, man. I gotta, I can't, I can't talk to you. Clippers are on tonight. <laughs> I, I I think I, I like watching the Clippers. I do. Okay. I'm not talking about who you like. I'm talking about a well, team. I'm, I'm talking about a player that you will, that you will like, okay, hang on. I, I, I got, we got to watch this tonight. Like I got, and I'm not talking about for your job. I'm not talking about for yeah. the show or the J street vibes podcast. I'm talking about, yo, I've, I've, I've got to make sure that I'm locked into this. Yeah. I, I, Kawhi? Kawhi's on that list. Yeah, Kawhi's wow. on that list. I love Kawhi ain't even on my list. Yeah, I like Kawhi on my list. I'm trying to wonder why Jokic isn't on my list. I just don't like his game. I just don't like his game, but he's bad. That boy's bad. But I said that earlier. I said that like in the first game of the season when the Kings played the Nuggets. I was like, I hate watching this guy play. Mm. Like, I'm not, I'm that doesn't mean he's not great. That doesn't mean anything like that. I just like, I'm not interested in watching him play. It's not fun to watch the way other people say he does some fun things on there like when you see the highlights i mean that's how i feel about harden yeah i don't think harden's fun to watch i don't think luca's fun to watch like luca jumped the shark for me this year Uh, i can't do it can't deal with you i feel feel the same way about both of those guys Kawhi though Kawhi, i I look i look forward to watching let let me ask you a question while we're here you think the nba is in a good place talent wise yeah I do. Just checking. I, I, I think they're in a great place. I look at it where everybody's got some got some dudes when they want to. You know what I'm saying? Like the Thunder, obviously they kind of stripped their roster to tank. Houston didn't do much to try and get better at the end of the season. But everybody, you know, has like a really good player on the squad. At least one. Mm-hmm. I think that's pretty dope. Now, you, go, go ahead. ahead. I want to hear what you got to say. Do you feel like the league is going to suffer when LeBron retires? I thought that for a long time. I used to say all the time, I said, you guys are going to miss LeBron when he's gone. I thought that. I don't think that as much anymore, especially after the year he was out of the playoffs. And I think the playoffs are different. Well, I guess he was out a long time that season. Yeah. He was out a long time that season. I remember – um I remember the, the ratings went down a lot when that first year with him in LA. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were like, ah, they're losing these coasts. You know, the coast is staying up for a Laker game. They went, and I think the Warriors weren't that, were they good that year? Yeah, it was, were, it, might was, been, it was. There might have been some Warriors fatigue that wasn't year. That, was sure, that, year. that was the fifth year, right? Wasn't that Toronto, yeah. Golden State? Yeah, it was the last year. So I think they'll be all right, though. Zion. Um, I guess you could throw Luca in there. You know, people seem to like him more than we do. But but I also uh, like like because it's not like LeBron's retiring next year. You know what I mean? So it's like if if we went if you know if 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 we played into the Bronny theory, right? It'll go three more years. Mm-hmm. That puts LeBron like right on the cusp, at least of forty. Mm-hmm. 
probably he probably passes Kareem, which I do think is going to wind up being important to him. And and I, I, I in fact it, it it will be important to him because you saw the you 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 might have seen the he he posted something on on um uh Instagram recently about his place on 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 the list of all time scores. So, mm-hmm. but three years from now, like we've already speculated, Kevin Durant's time of playing seventy eight to eighty two games per season is probably over. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's by choice or by health or whatever it may be, and I'm leaning towards it might be more by choice than anything else. Yeah. Kyrie, if Kyrie retired tomorrow, would you be shocked? <laughs> no. You, you know what I mean? So, like, we're, we're yeah. getting further down the line, and it winds up not just being LeBron James. It winds up being, like, a handful more of players who you realize, wow, some of these guys are still really, really important to the league, and now they're, you know, now they're stepping away and, we always search for that. We could be entering that weird time where there is no, there are guys there that are really important to the league, mm-hmm. but there's no, there has to be a guy that people love to hate, that mm-hmm. everybody loves to hate. And I think that's LeBron. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and it's like, you can love to hate Russell Westbrook, but that's not the same because you're not debating that Russell Westbrook is one the, the, the greatest player of all time. Right. You're debating whether LeBron James is the greatest player of all time. And I don't know who you ha- like if you don't have that guy it it, it feel there's a, there's a different feel there. And maybe that's the importance of where the New York Knicks come into play. Maybe the Knicks maybe basketball will be better if the Knicks are 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 in the NBA finals and you have a star there, or you have a guy that you can latch onto. But there has to be a guy who who can captivate the imagination of the fans in Detroit. Mm-hmm. In Orlando, hopefully not Sacramento, but they they fit here in the 2021 version of this scenario. Those teams that don't have any the, the, those fan bases that don't have anything to root for from now until the end of the NBA Finals. I really think Luca can be that type of dude. Wow, where he'll be. Did you just die a little? No. Oh, because I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm, look, I don't lie to you guys ever. Keep it a stack. That doesn't mean that I can't say the guy isn't great. But look, going to be definitely one of those guys I root against. <laughs> and I tune in to see him lose. Okay. And I think there is going to be, the more the hype continues, I think there will be a segment of fans who do the same thing for Luca. Like, why, why, why are we hyping this guy? He's been, he ain't done nothing in the first round for the last couple of years. He's a stat patter. Oh, you know what I mean? Like his usage rate is crazy. You know what I mean? Some of it will go overboard because the boy can play. Mm-hmm. That guy, that guy can hoop. So some of the some of it will eventually go overboard as far as trying to diminish who he is as a player um, because they don't like him. And I'm not for that because, like I said, he can he can go. But that's, I'll be on that bandwagon. I'm gonna tune into that first round series to see the Clippers smack the hell out of the Mavericks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think he'll get to that level. Zion, there's not much about Zion one way or another right now. I feel like he's developed a personality yet. Maybe that's because the Pelicans are are not where they're supposed to be or allegedly where they were supposed to be. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what his personality is. I don't either. And I think that's 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 part of it. Uh, Maybe he hasn't hit that groove yet. You know, he's only a couple of years into his into his career. It's it's not like Steph came into the league as, as Steph, right. you know what I mean? It, 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 it takes time. Hell, it, it took LeBron time to develop his, his personality. It could, could very well be the same with Zion, but I think that that, that guy has to have a personality. It Luca, you're right. Luca does have one. It, no one likes it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It appears no one outside of Dallas likes it. So that's a, that's a, that's a I, solid point there. I, I do think Zion can, can get there. He's just kind of stuck in this mm-hmm. place where, um, you want to talk about basketball hell? You know what I mean. He's stuck in a play. At least, at least we care about the Kings out here, as bad as they are. They don't mm-hmm. care about the Pelicans. You know what I mean. So he's kind of stuck in that place. They can turn that around, and maybe that's something. But I mean, the president came to see Zion. Very true. <laughs> yeah. President Obama came to see Zion. Yeah. So when he is in, and that was because he was at Duke, right? Mm-hmm. When he's at the right spot and the right spot, right spotlight. He's he's box office. He's absolute box office. Somebody made the comment. I was listening to something the other day when they were like, "Man, it's kind of crazy how the NBA um, 
has been able to do what they've done for the last 20 years. And people don't like to hear it, but without New York, they've done it without New York for mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. And you lose LeBron, but if you can get New York back, that matters to a small degree. They've done it without New York and Chicago. But you need a star in New York. No, I, 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 I don't create a star, though. I, I really do. He did that with the Ewing Knicks. Ewing was a star, but the rest of those guys, Oakley well, yeah, stars. but you had Ewing though. You can't you can't bypass that though. Yeah, Ewing was a star Ewing coming would... into Georgetown. Like you yeah. had you, you had the folded yeah the frozen envelope or the folded <laughs> envelope or or you know the piping hot envelope whatever was happening <laughs> inside that stupid tumbler. You had that like you you had so much <laughs> surrounding you know Patrick Ewing that it, it it he 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 was the star. But they'll get a star. They, they always have a star. I mean, look what they've done to Julius Randle. They've turned him into a star. I, I'd argue Julius Randle turned the Knicks into a star. Yeah, sure. But Julius Randle was playing well a couple years ago in New Orleans. And nobody here like this. Like, yeah, no, but he, okay, but he, he, you're right. He was playing well, but now he's playing. He's like all NBA playing. He is. I don't think he, he was all NBA in... in, in, in um, he, he absolutely... Well, it, it is the chicken and egg situation to a certain degree, but I think if Julius Randle does does this here in Sacramento, it's not it's not the same. And you know I love Sacramento, but it's not the same. He does it with the New York. If Julius Randle did this in Brooklyn, I don't think it's the same. If the, if the Kings had the Knicks' success this year, I think it would be a big deal. It wouldn't be it as would big of a deal, but to people like Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman mm -hmm. and 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 Greeny. It wouldn't be who we love. It wouldn't be as big of a deal to them. But in, in terms of the NBA world, I think it'd still be a pretty big deal. <sighs> Maybe. I don't think so. I think, I, like I said, they, and I they'll desperately have, wanted Julius Randle here a couple of years ago I when he was too. a free agent. I did too. I, 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 I like that idea of Julius Randle. Um, but look what they did with uh, <laughs> look what they did with Jeremy Lin. <laughs> okay, that's a solid point. That's a solid point. That's that's good. Jeremy Lin doing that in Milwaukee wouldn't have been the same. And God bless Jeremy Lin, who I think I think he kind of retired yesterday. Yeah, I saw something. I don't know that he like he 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 didn't say like I retire, but he was. It was written in a way that's like, oh, he retired. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> he's done. Lin's sanity was crazy. Dude, that was that that was must see TV. That absolutely was, and he produced for like two weeks. He yeah, oh yeah, every time it was, it was like, oh, let me see if this dude's real. And he dropped thirty five. <laughs> it, 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 it was the best mini series in history. Like it was, it didn't it didn't last long. It's like your favorite show. It was only three episodes. Yeah. Who your favorite show? It was really good for those three episodes. Yeah. But then they have one game where they specifically it was like Lakers, Knicks in the Garden. And it was nowhere near national TV. And they said, to hell with that. We're covering it on ESPN. And uh, and he had like 38. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Lakers in the garden. And the garden went crazy. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that chicken was wild. Feet. Chicken feet. Carmelo hated him. <laughs> Carmelo. I remember, I remember they asked Carmelo this season, the summer, Jeremy Lin was a free agent. And he goes, uh. He says something to the effect of like, what would you bring back Jeremy Lin? It's like, I like Jeremy Lin. Jeremy Lin can play. $20 million a year. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy. But I, I like him. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> In hindsight, Carmelo was right. <laughs> Carmelo is 100% sure. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. That that that, that good 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 mini series there. Is it there? Like roots. <laughs> you it, be was a little, it was a mini series. It wasn't a whole series. You saw it and enjoyed it, or you didn't enjoy it, one of the two. And and the comp you just hit us with was Roots. I love that. Like, <laughs> That's the first mini series I could think of. I love that. Ro Roots was the mini series that, that Kenny would. <laughs> you still got the Jesse the Body Ventura clip in your head. That's why you used Roots as an example. Um, I think that's a, a large reason why. <laughs> is there a football? Is there is there another athlete outside of basketball who you like will tune in to see? Because I, I feel like it, you for me, I mean, it still is to a certain degree. But now I I kind of I don't have the same feeling Serena. Oh yeah. Like I'll I'll, I'll yeah, tune in I'll for Serena. Serena. Yeah. But 
I also have different. I like I I don't have that warm fuzzy feeling anymore, especially when it when it feels like she just can't get that final right. like her, to go her way. Right. Uh, she's 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 one. Um, yeah, I'll tune in. I'll tune in to my Serena for Tiger sure. on a Sunday. Tiger on a Sunday, absolutely. But um, like, is Patrick Mahomes must see TV? Could is there a football player? I'm using Patrick Mahomes as an example because I feel like he's the kind of this. I don't know. The st- he's he's the guy. He's the it mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. It, it, but is he must see TV? Like, does everybody tune in to see Patrick Mahomes play? And is there a football player that everybody tunes in to see? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't. Th- I don't think there's a football player. You know, it sounds. And I think sounds- the NFL likes that. Oh, they love it. They love it. You're tuning in to see football. I think You're not tuning in to see Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady or Derrick Henry or whoever. Uh, Derrick Henry I, might be the greatest house of highlights football player. Right. But And that's also the difference, too, with the NBA and the NFL. You know, it's been well documented. But in the NBA, whoever that star is, they're, they're going to put him up there. I mean, I guess I know Derrick Henry. So that might be a bad example. But I don't know much of anything about the Titans. I, the car, the Colts, like because I do this for a living. Yeah, I know a couple of people on it. Ain't nobody on the Colts that stand out, but they're one of the top teams in the league, right? The 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 Jazz or the equivalent of the Colts. We know who, who Donovan Mitchell is. We know who Rudy Gobert is. You know what I'm saying? Like NFL, they're, they're cool with the, just the, the the team name and, and go about it that way. There might be a baseball player on this list. Oh, there's for sure a baseball player. There, there might be two, to be no, honest. There's one. You. There's only one. Oh, there might be one two. of them's injured. There's one. Yeah. And and that's it. And and I will I'm gonna say this too. And you're not going we'll, we could talk about this on the other side. I think there's a boxer on the list. Oh, yeah, you're wrong. I hate when you're wrong. <laughs> I think there's a boxer no. on the list. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll continue this conversation. Um, we'll talk more about the Lakers and the Warriors and the, as well. Bonte Hill scheduled to join us uh, at 2.30. Uh, Rick Adaman hopefully going to join us coming up at 3 o'clock uh, as Dilo and Casey continue here on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. Kenny Careway here, and we're talking about must see guys in sports. And th- there's a number, and we're gonna we're gonna run down a couple of the guys when we come back. But make no mistake about it. Whenever I'm watching any of these guys, I like to have me a nice little refreshing drink next to me. And typically that's gonna be some kind of juice mixed with a little McQueen and the Violet Fog Gin. I love me some McQueen. It's that smooth, distinct citrus flavor that cools and refreshes me every single time. No lie. All right. The Brazilian gin is produced in limited batches of less than 55 cases per distillation. So that tells me two things. Number one, because of that quality that you get from every bottle of McQueen, it is completely unmatched when you talk about the competition. And number two, I can attest to this. They don't make much, but what they do make is damn good. All right. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to check out this bottle of McQueen and the Violet Fog Gin on drizzly.com. Order you some there or Grab a bottle next time you're at the store. And if the store doesn't have it, let me know. Let Damien know. We'll talk to our guy, your guy, Ben, at the Sovereign Brands, and we'll get that re-up and we'll get a bottle to you. You can also show us you enjoy McQueen and the Violet Fog Gin by tagging your post at DLO and KC and at McQueen Violet Fog. We need to just go ahead and let the entire region know. Let the entire valley know about the biggest boss when it comes to who has the best gin in the game out here today. After 500 years, it's time for a new gin. It's time for McQueen and the Violet Fog gin. KIFM reminds you, be responsible. Don't drink and drive. They can't hear. They can't hear you. Who, who, who are you thinking? I think so, too. <laughs> I think so, too. He, yeah. And then that, that's kind of what I was going to say, but I, I, and Damien, I think Damien will hear it too. If there's one guy I say, you got to go watch. 
It's him. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. Yeah. What Tani? Out of uh, mm, yes, no, number one, he definitely is more than Trout for sure. Um, but I I got to see him in any any scenario now. Got to see him. <laughs> now, I, I I gotta I gotta I gotta get um, more in tune with this. He he doesn't hit the days he pitches, does he? But they they could put him in there if they wanted to, right? Okay. Huh. Got gotcha. you. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good call, Jesse. I'm gonna have you come on and mention that because I don't think I don't think Damien's gonna mention him, and I wasn't gonna mention him. So, yeah. Who? We'll, we'll, we're gonna surprise you on the show. If you say it, then it'll blow the surprise. But so what? <laughs> <clears throat> You're doing um. You doing uh something with Matt today? You doing that round table? Is that today? Yes. Yes, yes. Jill yes. and I are gonna record something right before that. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Shout out to Matt. <laughs> He's probably watching. He just doesn't want to get in trouble. What's up, Matt? <laughs> See you, baby. Uh, you could run. Run one, please. Pretty please. I'll be pretty stressed out by about 243. <laughs> <laughs> he does not have a calmness to his tone at all. <laughs> you know, the thing about it though, uh our our people are cool, man. Like if it if Dude, it did they're, they're cool, man. They're good. <laughs> man we're <laughs> we're having fun uh yolanda griffith member of the 2021 Yo. hall of fame class in the 2005 WNBA champion sacramento monarchs she's going to join us on the stream tomorrow on twitch.tv slash espn 1320 and youtube.com uh slash espn 1320 she'll be with us tomorrow at 12 30 rick adamant is scheduled to join us Coming up at 3 o'clock, the truth is, we have no idea if Rick Adam is actually going to join us. Danny in San Francisco <laughs> is stressed out over this. We, Again, I have evidence. We got the text that Rick was coming on at 3, and I was like, yo, we good to promote this. Yep. All right. Put a little graphic together, put it out on social media, and it, and it caught traction. Rick doesn't do a lot of interviews, obviously, with the news on Luke Walton yesterday. Like, Kings fans were hyped for this. Yeah. About 11.30, I get a call. Like, so here's the deal. <laughs> it's like, and I knew. So Danny is our guy, right? But yeah. Danny has a – he doesn't hide his emotions very well. Like, he'd make a terrible producer. Because if he got in your ear, you would know something terrible happened. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you could tell by the tone of his voice, something awful is going on. And so he's like, I, I haven't heard from Rick this morning. I mean, he texted me yesterday. Uh, uh, I haven't heard from him this morning. Jesse's going to call him here in a little bit. So Jesse called him. Haven't heard from him. <laughs> the truth is, at this point, if Rick Adelman is here at three o'clock, it's going to be a dope surprise for all of us. <laughs> Tune in and, and like, find out. And like, like what? What do we, it's it's part of the business. Sometimes you book somebody like it's important to us. Uh, maybe 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 somebody was having fun from Danny in San Francisco, and it actually was Rick Battleman, and it was just <laughs> it, you know he, it was Rick Adelman's oh. old phone number. Like who knows? Yeah, can we talk to Rick Battleman then? Does he want to come on? <laughs> we might have to. We 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 might have to. We'd be like, oh, that was just a typo on the graphic. I just forgot to put the B in. It's 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 Rick Batman. So uh, we Bonte Hill confirmed, confirmed, yes, confirmed, 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 confirmed. <laughs> He's joining us uh, at two thirty to talk about the Lakers and the Warriors. Uh, Rick Adaman might be with us at three o'clock. Uh, if not, we're gonna have fun no matter what. Whether Rick is here for the fun or not, we'll just read some of these messages here in the chat house. Oh my goodness! That that will uh, that will be oh, just as, as as every as entertaining oh, as uh. I, I can I can promise you this. 
if Rick Adelman does not show up on this radio show, I promise you he shows up in the chat. Oh, oh that is a hundred percent guaranteed. <laughs> there is the 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 chat. There's always a surprise <laughs> appearance. There's always a run in, as they say in wrestling. From uh, there's always a run in there in the chat. We actually just had one um, uh, during the last commercial break. A former afternoon show host made a made a run in here into the chat. <laughs> oh man! So that happens. That happens pretty regularly. <laughs> Uh, the chat is must see TV. Uh, yes. As much as we were talking about yeah. Steph Curry, LeBron James, uh, LeBron James, guys who are 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 must see TV. Uh, the chat is is must see TV, and you know I told you this, and I know it, it'd be a surprise to you. I I think there's a must see baseball player right now. And he's a guy I've kind of latched on to for, for like, he really, I told you there has to be a guy that gets, gets me interested. Mm -hmm. This guy got me interested a couple of years ago, but then he got hurt and it was like, mm -hmm. well, all right, I'm done. I've got Fernando Tatis. Like that is, okay. that is my guy, but of course he's hurt. So obviously me, me liking a baseball player is a kiss of death to their season. <laughs> yeah. Don't like any giants. But how can you not be intrigued by what Shohei Atani is doing right there now? There we go. There we go. I got to bring Jesse in here because Jesse mentioned it. I mean, Jesse, you, you talked about it. Yeah, okay. Tony's must -see. Yeah, he's more must see than Trout. And Trout's the best player on that team. Yeah, I mean, facts. And yeah. Trout's out, and no one cares. By the way, like no, no, like we 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 said this the other day. Uh, Mike Trout's out. What what is it? Six to eight weeks, and it's like, all right. Yeah. What's that mean? Nothing. Be well soon. Keep it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Get better. Yeah. Nobody Not, like no one's really going to know. Someone's going to tune into an Angels game in like two months and go, "Where's Mike Trout?" Yeah, I mean, now if Trout can't pitch. Why should I be interested? That's right. <laughs> now we got confirmation during the break. Ramsey says that he does hit the day he pitches. Yeah, didn't he? Oh, he's on tonight. Okay, I was. Didn't he uh, pitch a couple of like? Did didn't he pitch the other day and hit home runs in the same game? I, I mean, I'm. I he leads. He leads the league in home runs. Wow, that's ridiculous. I saw something earlier. Did, did you see? Um, did you see a, the side by side of him when he entered the league and today? I didn't. It's akin to those pictures from Giannis when he entered the league and today. Oh, geez. Like he is the arms, the biceps, the triceps, the thirty-six inch pythons, brother. He is ripped. Did you see the did you see the pick that, that Giannis made fun of himself in where he, he was screaming? Yeah, definitely wouldn't have made that comment. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't have captioned that Giannis. <laughs> um Shohei Atani has 14 home runs. That's the most in Major League Baseball this season. And in a interesting stat, it's the latest into a season that a player born in Asia has ever been the outright home run leader. And it's the most home runs by an outright home run leader born in either Asia or Europe. The last uh -huh. player born outside of the Americas to lead Major League Baseball outright in home runs was United Kingdom born Dave Brain. Okay. Was this Dave before or after Jackie Robinson? <laughs> before. <laughs> No, that makes sense. <laughs> Dave Brain led the majors in home runs in 1907. Wow. <laughs> but damn it, don't swing at a 3 0 pitch. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. Tony LaRusso, please. We'll get, we'll, we'll, please. we'll get, we'll get now, to that. Now, Tony is as must see TV. I mean, he's got me looking forward to. Um, his at bats, mm -hmm. especially days like tonight when he's going to pitch and bat. Yeah. I mean, that's my CTV. Um, I knew you were going to say Tatis Jr. I was going to say Atani, but also Acuna Jr. I think he's okay. my CTV. I mean, the, the flair that he has, the way he hits. I mean, the, to me, sounds crazy. The jewelry popping everywhere. I love it. You love I that. Love yeah. it. I love it. I play, I play softball with jewelry. I believe two, it. Two big chains. Yeah, I absolutely. believe it. So I love that. Um, but I, I mentioned and my man, Jesse, he knew where I was going and he's right. It may just be a boxing thing. It may be, but I, I think it might transcend a little bit, just a little bit. I think Javon A. Tank Davis is my DTV. Absolutely. 
Okay. I don't, I don't know what to, like, I told I, you I to couldn't. watch them. You saw them. Yeah. It was electric. You know, and it, and if you tell me tomorrow that he's fighting, I'll tune in. I'm never going to know when he's fighting unless you tell me. Therefore, maybe within the boxing world, he's must-see TV. But I can't. I, 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 is Jazz at the house going, yo, when's the tank fight? Oh, well, that's the wrong person to ask. Okay. She absolutely right. is saying when's the tank fight. But Probably. she's a box. She watches boxing. You've ruined her. Tank and the Charlos. That's what it is. Right. Um, Deontay Waters on that. But I'll say this. Get any guy like that that is knocked out that gives people memories of Mike Tyson. And they will become must see TV. So even yeah, in the UFC, like, they don't have a guy like that, so to speak. They had John it. John Jones. They had it. No, John what? Jones has screwed his. He no. They had two of them at the same time. They had Connor. Connor was must see TV, whether he you was. liked him or not. He was. He, Ronda Rousey he was to a certain degree. Eh, he, he, he lost me. He, 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 yeah, he, he's one loss away from being gone from that. But if yeah. Connor, if I Connor think he, fights, I think he hit it. I think it, he's hit it. He like might, he's he's out. He might. Maybe I just he must see for me because I want to see him get smacked up. Maybe, but Ronda was must see TV too. Yeah, Ronda, Ronda, you come out your pocket fifty dollars to see or sixty dollars to see or however much they are. And Conor McGregor was the same way. Yeah. And they both they 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 both lost. They both lost that that luster. I mean, Ronda lost it and just left. Right. Conor, I don't even know why Conor keeps fighting. Maybe he's just chasing that last win. I don't know what it is. He don't need I the don't money. Know either I don't know what he, he's doing. He got boxing money. You can't and fight with that same level of passion when you've got the amount of money that he has from that one fight against Floyd Mayweather in the bank. I mean, and yeah. now he's used that. And, and kudos to him. He's a businessman. He used that to, you know, spread it off into other ventures and, right. and, and into other ideas. But yeah, he um he's got that boxing money off mm -hmm. the Floyd Mayweather fight. And then he, he parlayed that not only into the other businesses, but he parlayed that into kind of handcuffing Dana White and being like, you're not going to pay me what you pay the rest of these guys. Yeah. Like, if you want me to come back. Yep. And go for him I'm for doing getting, that. I'm getting close to boxing money for, to come back. Good, into the, yep. to knock the gun. Good for him so, for doing that because Dana pays these guys like trash. Right. Right. So when you break down the percentages of it. UFC fighters get paid like absolute trash. Yeah, garbage. Complete garbage. Um, but you, 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 you flip that and you say, well, that's a whole nother discussion. But Amanda Nunez is destroying people in the UFC. Mm -hmm. She's not must-see TV. False. She is must-see TV. They just don't build her up. And you know why they don't build her oh, up. That's what I said. That's a whole nother discussion. She doesn't look like Ronda. Discussion. She doesn't look like Paige Van Zandt. They put more effort into Paige Van Zandt. Oh, God bless her. Gosh. Hey, alpha male, the whole deal, alpha female, whatever her term was she had no business getting the attention that she did. And there were a number of fighters significantly better than her, but there's a reason Amanda Nunez doesn't get the same promotion that, that Ronda Rousey and, and, and Paige Van Zandt got. 100%. The other thing about that though, is Amanda, I don't think there's anybody that people believe can mess with Amanda Nunez right now. And that actually probably works against her. Like if, if, if it's a bunch of people where it's like, she's going to just trample this little girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know about anybody else. I'm not tuning into that. But, 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 you, but no, that's what, that's what up, you do. What do you mean? That's what you tune into those fights for. When you, when you no. go from musty TV, you're, you're no, I, I, I disagree. That's no. Ronda Rousey was the Mike Tyson factor. Amanda Nunez is the same thing. It's the Mike Tyson factor. But Tyson was, and, and Mike Tyson was, too. Mike Tyson built Mike Tyson fast factor. Not only can he beat somebody, but how quickly can he beat somebody? That, but but that also lasted how many years? Less than five oh. for Mike. Uh, Mike 80, Mike's, Mike's thing wasn't that long. Eighty seven. Like, yeah, about that to ninety one. Yeah, yeah or, it not, or was it ninety? Ninety. When was yeah. the Tokyo fight? Ninety. Okay. It was 91. It was 91. 91. I remember the Sports okay. Illustrated covering. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, man, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, even then, so to, to that point, even then, he, like Buster Douglas fight couldn't even happen in America because nobody thought Buster had a chance. Right. So nobody was checking for that. Like people weren't checking for that. They were checking for Holyfield. They even checking for Frank Bruno. Because Frank Bruno was like, yo, they this guy still wanted him. to see him knock out James Buster Douglas to get to Evander Holyfield. It's not like people bypassed the 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 fight. 
It's not like people bypass the Buster Douglas fight. Mm, there might have been people like I know. I, I I remember my experience with that fight vividly. Mm -hmm. I got to my my grandpa used to my grandma and grandpa my grandparents used to live next door to us. It had a duplex live next door. My my mom was like, you can you can go you can go watch the fight with grandpa, but you got to get ready for bed or whatever it is. Yeah. So like I'm you know whatever I'm nine years old, ten years old, whatever I'm getting my snacks. I'm going to and, and I get there and I'm like, is it over? Because it was like it had started like 15 minutes ago. So I was like, is the fight over? Mm -hmm. He was like, no, it's in the you know fourth round, fifth round, whatever it was. So mm -hmm. I sit down and 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 we're watching and then you know up. <laughs> I'll never forget my grandpa's reaction to that, but <laughs> I thought the fight was over. You yeah. know, and and yeah. I, I we we came to see we tuned in to see Mike Tyson knock people out. That's what we weren't tuning in for the fight. Like it, it's like it, you know, it, equating this to other sports, it's like, are you comp are you tuning in to see? Were you tuning in at three years ago to see how many points Steph Curry would score? Were you tuning in to see how many threes he was going to hit? Mm -hmm. Were you tuning in to see how many points the Warriors were going to beat their opponents by? Mm -hmm. I felt like it, it was they had that Tyson factor to him. That's what Ronda had. That's what Connor had. That's what Amanda Nunez has. Amanda, they, they, they just don't market it. They can tune it in for Amanda Nunez. Because they won't market her. They pushed the hell out of Ronda Rousey. They definitely did. I, well, I'm different. I didn't tune in to Ronda Rousey. I knew who she was, but I didn't tune in to Ronda Rousey. But I tuned in and I paid attention because they had this lady named Cyborg that could beat the hell out of her. And I said, that's who I want to see her face. Amanda Nunez ain't got no Cyborg. She beat the hell out of the Cyborg. Like she, there's, there's no, there's, there's nothing to compare her against. Even with Floyd and Pacquiao, they, they worked with each other because it was like, oh, let me see Pacquiao's fight to see if he won more convincingly than Floyd and vice versa and vice versa. And that's why that worked. They don't, they don't have that with Nunez right now. And combine that with the fact that they won't promote her the way they should. There's that too. You're listening to D-Lo and Casey on ESPN 1320 KIFM, West Sacramento, KRX, QHD2 Sacramento, and Odyssey Station in Driven by Lashers, Elk Grove Dodge. It's Kenny Carraway. I'm Damian Barling. We're live on twitch.tv slash ESPN 1320 and youtube.com slash ESPN 1320. Uh, Bonte Hill going to join us coming up here at 2.30. Of course, uh, he's one of the hosts over at The Morning Roast on 95.7 The Game in San Francisco. And he handles television duties over on NBC Sports Bay Area. We'll talk Warriors, Lakers with him. We might be talking to Rick Adelman at 3 o'clock. Maybe. Who knows? it would be fun if we do. Uh, but Rick is scheduled to join us. Somebody named Rick Adelman, whether it's the Sacramento Kings former coach or not. Somebody named Rick Adelman is scheduled to join us coming up at the top of the 3 o'clock hour. Uh, Summer League is back officially. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe not officially, but sources tell uh, the Las Vegas Review Journal that uh, Summer League is returning to Las Vegas August 8th through 17th. That's good to see. Summer League's a blast. Yeah. I got to experience it one time. I haven't been there. Yet. Well, there are rumors. <laughs> there there, there, I, there, I, there I are rumors close to ESPN 1320 that say that could be a possibility. Hey, I'm not holding my breath. Sources close to ESPN thirteen twenty say, <laughs> you know, I love me some Vegas. I ain't holding my breath. What you mean? Wait, wait, oh, what do you? Wait, wait, you don't want to go? You scared? No, I definitely want to go. Mm -hmm. I'm preparing myself for a different outcome. Okay. Get to see that boy Louis the King. No, that'd be dope. Louis the King. Let's go. I think Louis the King gonna, so, gonna be there. So man, let's get the. He's gonna be there. Let's get the time frame here really quick. July 29th is the draft. Mm -hmm. Free agency is a couple of so the, the the draft is Thursday. That's the 29th. Free agency starts that Monday, so that's got to be the second August second. Mm -hmm. And now we've got summer league coming up uh, August eighth through seventeenth. Is it too much to squeeze in a little California classic? I don't think so. I mean, it's it's everything. Everything will be fine by August. Hell, I think everything will be fine by Friday. Uh, the hell, they squeeze it in already. It's only here for three days. And then those people go to Vegas. Yeah, let's go. Let's get it in. So they Bring put, the California Classic if they, back. If they start in Summer League on August 8th, that is a Sunday. They could do the California Classic on... You just stop in Sacramento on your way. Yeah, you, you get drafted. It that first week. And whoever no, gets drafted... Is that would be crazy. Assuming anyone gets drafted by the Kings, like you, you 
come to Sacramento, do your media availability. A couple days later, you get the California Classic in. In a game that would absolutely should uh, be allowed, would have 17,000 people yeah. in it. And then off to Las Vegas for Summer League. You could do you could do the California Classic on Tuesday the third, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That'll leave you Friday and Saturday to get to Vegas. I've already figured it out. Talk to me, Adam Silver. Wonder if we could get anyone to sponsor a trip to Summer League. I just, just, I'm, I'm thinking, thinking if we can get someone to sponsor a trip to Summer League because I think we need hey. to be there this year. Hey. They do things in Vegas too. They do things. I, I mean, I've rumor uh, again. Sources close to D'Lo and KC uh, say our man B- Black Bottles Nine One Six was in Vegas recently <laughs> with Ricky Rose. So I mean, if we just coordinate a few trips, like John Witherspoon says, you got to coordinate. <laughs> coordinate. Uh, we'll go ahead and and see if we can get that done. Yeah, but summer league's back in. Summer league is <laughs> unfortunately. Summer League is a favorite of Sacramento. <laughs> like I say, unfortunately, because, you know, we're always looking to the next year. We're always looking to like, okay, what's next? Like the season has been over. By the time Summer League gets here, for Kings fans, the Summer League has been over for a while. Yeah. So we've, yeah. we've, we've, we've got to have that next thing to look forward to. So the fact that it's back um, officially uh, could be pretty exciting. Again, August 8th through the 17th. Uh, it's a great place that you go and build relationships. You can get some great guests on the show uh, as well. So we'll, we'll work on that. Um, mm-hmm. We'll see if we can get out there for the return of summer league. It'll be gotta interesting go to, to see if all work. That's, what it go is. Work. That's all it is. Uh, Tony La Russa has got to go to work as well. Oh. I wish he didn't. We kind of mentioned this a few minutes ago. I know. Okay. I've, I've accepted. There's nothing I can do about it. Don't like it, but it is the way it is. There are unwritten rules in baseball. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I think it's stupid. It's always been stupid. It's always going to be stupid. But Tony La Russa throwing his own player under the bus Come was on, like a wild twist of events that I did not expect. Apparently, uh, it was your mirror, Mercedes, mm-hmm. swung at a 3-0 pitch, knocked it out the park. Mercedes plays for Tony La Russa. La Russa was pissed. Allegedly, La Russa gave him the, you know, the take sign, which is another thing that I just don't understand that I'll, we, we, we could get to later. And then backed it up by saying, well, you know, there's going to be retaliation for that. Guess what? There was retaliation for that. He got hit by a pitch and La Russa was like, eh, ah, well, I, I don't get it. You, you can never make me. There's maybe I'm the old stubborn one, but you can never make me understand this. Um, you know, I'm a little old school with it, you know, and I understand it and to a certain degree, I'm, I'm okay with it. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out there and politic for my own guy to get hit. You know what I'm saying? Like I wouldn't, it's, come on, man. Come on. Tony LaRusso is 76 years old. What the hell is he doing in a dugout right now? I have no idea. I have no idea. He's actually doing a pretty good job too, but I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> White Sox are in first place, I think, right now. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll never, I'll never understand this. It, it's when every time I get built up by the Shohei Atanis and the uh, Fernando Tatis and Acuna and, and, and these different legitimate baseball stars around the mm-hmm. league, I'm knocked down a couple of pegs by guys like Tony La Russa. I'm knocked down a couple of pegs. By someone swinging at a 3-0 pitch. Because if, if that's what, what was it, 15 to 4? Can, mm-hmm. can can someone in the chat confirm that? Was it was that the score 15 to 4? If mm-hmm. if we really have to baby this sport and, and we're not allowed to swing, we're not allowed to steal, we're not allowed to do these certain things. Let if, if, if we're gonna treat the game like it's being played by by 10-year-olds, let's treat them like 10-year-olds. Mm. Let's just let's just implement a mercy rule. Yeah, a full on yeah, mercy yeah. rule in major league baseball. And All you right. know I would hate that, but if they're gonna do it like that, then sure. You're you right. really, you really want to up it a notch? Mercy rule. Team that just got mercied, or however we phrase this, the team that just lost by 10 points, you don't get paid today. <laughs> if it's that important to you, you don't get paid. <laughs> Do something about it. Man, this is so stupid. Year after year, they do this stupid stuff. And every time I'm brought back in, Old man comes in and goes, nah, we don't want you here. 
Get on. Keep it moving. Yeah, Tony Larusa. You got to understand, it's a new day and time, man. And I understand. But is it? Um, the game. Yeah, it should be. It should be. That's what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe, maybe Major League Baseball isn't, um, you know, saying, "Oh, it's a new day and time." But it should be. Like I said, I, that was one of your great rules of all time. If you guys are Mercy so rule. sensitive, yeah, if you're so sensitive about somebody swinging at a three zero pitch at fifteen to four in a 15 to four game, then just have a mercy rule. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. We'll protect everybody's feelings. We don't have to worry about stealing bases. We don't have to worry about swinging at pitches. All this talk over there. And in, 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 I see uh, Ramsey in here in the chat talking about, oh, it was a 46 mile an hour pitch thrown by a position player. That ain't who's pro that, that ain't whose problem is that? It ain't mine. It ain't your Mercedes problem. Mm -hmm. You're gonna march out. Of, uh, you can march a six year old out there, and if he gets the, if he just lobs the ball over the plate, and you can swing at it, swing at it, knock that yeah. ball into the ocean. Ramsey was agreeing with you, by the way. That's fine. <laughs> he says all, he says all rules are off with the position player on the mound. That's ridiculous. It's absolutely yeah. ridiculous, man. Yeah, in, I, in positive news though, do we we seems like when we talk about baseball, it's always to clown them. You know what I mean? No, it's just clowning a... aspects of it. Like we just spoke Shohei Itani. We just we just named that there are stars in baseball we like. Yes. It's just this. I don't like this. But in positive news, mm -hmm. another no hitter last night in Seattle. This one by Detroit Tigers pitcher Spencer Turnbull. How is that positive is that? though? Like, how That's many fun. no hitters are going to be pitched this year? Um, like. I, I well, asked you, five right now. I asked you this question a couple of days ago, like like after the last no hitter. Are they still special? Absolutely. Come on. Even man. when they're happening this often, they're happening more often than usual. Five no hitters in the first 30, 40 games or so. I mean, that's but that's a lot, but they're still special. But I feel like this is, is a dunk special. Yes, a good dunk is special. Okay. The Giants, are they still special? Absolutely. Still in first so, place. So special, they're still in first place. I just, and then maybe this is a sign of what's going on. I just, you, you see it, and we never really get to it because we don't talk baseball. But after every weekend, um, on every Monday uh, rundown that we have, I say, Giants still in first place. <laughs> barely, but they're still in first barely. place. Right now they're only a half game up well, on a Padre. Right? And that's not a knock on that's not a knock on San Francisco. San Diego's playing well. They are. San Diego's playing playing it's playing a, it's well the right now. It's division in baseball. It's tough. Yeah, it's 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 definitely tough. We'll step out, we'll come back. Maybe the Dodgers getting their act together a little bit. Oh, please. Oh, no. Okay, I don't want you to get nervous there. Uh Lakers Ow. Warriors tonight. <laughs> We're talking with Bonte Hill. He's on the radio uh, in 95.7 The Game in San Francisco, and he's got the TV coverage tonight on NBC Sports Bay Area. He joins us next here as D-Lo and Casey continue on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. Yeah. Let me slide real quick. Then, Eric, um, no. Madison Bum, Garner did not throw no hater. Stop it. Seven innings. No. Uh, uh, I think we're calling Bonte, right? Yeah, we're calling him. Make sure I got my little Bonte name plate here. Bonte, 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 Bonte. I wish there was some way I could organize these damn things. Bonte. Yep. Um, I'm kind of with Poker Pro here. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of with Poker Pro here. Like. You you played the allotted amount of innings that Major League Baseball told you to play, and nobody got a hit. It's not like the game was canceled after seven innings. It was a seven-inning game. Feels like a no-hitter to me. Feels like a no-hitter to me. I hate when I agree with Poker Pro, but when a man's right, the man's right. Oh, there we go, B. Yeah, Giants-Dodgers this weekend. That'll be fun. That'll be fun for sure. <clears throat> yeah, he's playing good ball too. Yeah, he's playing good ball. Yep, he's Ash. Of course, I see you ready for that. 
That's right. No hits, which makes it a no hitter. If you told me that the game got rained out seven innings in seven innings, it's fine. It was an allotted seven inning game. Therefore, it's a no hitter. Man. I've been so uh, right when right when Danny in San Francisco called earlier about Rick. That's when I had started to prepare for the interview. Now I'm obviously I like I I have a certain level of preparation for this interview, but Rick is one of those guys where I think that you have to like word the question properly or you could get like a Popovich answer. And again, given the fact this isn't media availability, like he's not obligated uh to join us. Um I still I, I'm 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 confident he'll he'll want to talk. But still. I have to I feel like you have to word these questions properly. Word them properly. I don't really want to lead off with, hey, how bad is Luke? I mean, seriously. Like you watch this guy play. Are you like, man, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Rick Adam and joining us. Rick, we are relieved to hear from you. Um, oh man, what do you think? Um, hit me again, Bryce. What 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 do I think about what? Um, what do you think? ESPN thirteen twenty. Um, I I can't see the. I guess triple doubles are only not special when one particular player does them. Oh, th- is it was this the question, uh, Bryce? I, I I give you that. Yeah, he I was. give you that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he still is to a certain degree. I give you that. Baseball is hard to have a must see TV guy though. No, no baby room Bonte today. Uh, we'll keep him on the phone. We know he's we know he's busy. Um. Oh, man. Shout out to Anthony. I don't know if he's watching or listening, but he loved the La Russa hate. Bonte Hill confirmed, confirmed for 2.30. He's going to join us here. Uh, Rick Adelman, he, he doesn't get the confirm, confirm tag. He just gets the, we hope so, uh, coming up at 3 o'clock. Uh, oh. Wow. Rick Adelman confirmed. Let's go. Boy, let's go. Let's he's go. A flare for the drama. Oh, the chat, the chat didn't hear that. By the way. Sorry, I get that. that's why I repeated yeah. it. Rick Adaman <laughs> will be with us uh, for sure. Confirmed, confirmed status. Yes, sir. Uh, for Rick Adaman coming up at the top of the three o'clock hour. Yolanda Griffith <laughs> will join us. <laughs> I feel like Danny in San Francisco just popped a bottle of Luke Bel Air because <laughs> he knows he knows above all else. We would have never have let him live this down <laughs> if, if if Rick hadn't uh, if Rick hadn't confirmed confirmed. So uh, Rick Adaman locked in uh, for three o'clock. Yolanda Griffith locked in as well uh, tomorrow uh, at twelve thirty. She's going to join us on the stream, so you can watch, see her. You can see her on Twitch.tv slash ESPN thirteen twenty and YouTube.com slash ESPN thirteen twenty. So we got Rick, we got Yo, yeah. Feels like we're just waiting for one more. Come on now. Come on now. We're working on it. We're working on it. I think we can get that done. We want to do something different with Chris, though. Yeah. We want, we want Chris like on the we want Chris Rick Ross style. We want Chris on the stream, you know, with 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 an hour blocked off. And if if the if the conversation goes 20 minutes, if the conversation goes 30 minutes or or whatever, whatever. We we want we want Chris in that more like less radio interview. Like excited to talk to Rick Adam and Rick Adamans a radio interview. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Yolanda, yeah. we're gonna be a little bit more laid back with Yolanda. We're gonna have conversations. I know her, we know each other. Uh we'll okay. be able to have like a, a a fun conversation there. But Chris, we wanna we wanna be able to fall back and like really just kind of dive into some stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so we're working on it. Like the messages have been sent. We're, we're kind of working through a, 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 a handful of people. Um, and we're going to try to get this done. So, uh, but we're, we're, we're up to, uh, two of the three, uh, 2021 hall of famers, uh, who are associated with Sacramento. So Rick Adelman, uh, coming up at three o'clock, Yolanda Griffith will be with us tomorrow uh, at 1230. Bonte Hill will be with us in 10 minutes. Hey, the power of speaking things into existence, the power of words. The power of positivity. Damien, is there day. anything yes, is. <laughs> is there anything that we have said we wanted that has not happened? Oh, I can think of one. <laughs> I can think of one. Hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. There's 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 one thing we want <laughs> that involves uh that involves uh, two of your favorite podcast hosts, but we're we're working on it. Oh, that's what we. Hey, that's 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 we accurate. Gotta keep, we got to keep talking. We got to keep talking. Accurate. We we speak things into yeah. existence here. Well, Chris, uh, gonna, Chris gonna pull up. Chris gonna pull up. We gonna we make, that, make that happen. We have yeah. a couple of ideas for that. Uh, I love that you use the Denzel celebrities <laughs> not dead gift. I love that you use that for for Rick Adelman confirmed three o'clock. <laughs> So I failed. <laughs> and I love that the double word has become synonymous with the show. Like they know what it is, man. Confirm, confirm the core core. Like that's oh, oh, Rick really coming on today. Okay. Okay. Uh Bonte Hill gonna join us in about 10 minutes. Uh, Lakers, Warriors tonight. Uh, we've been talking about must see TV. We've been talking about must see athletes. Obviously, this game has massive playoff implications. But it's not win or go home. It's not do or die. It's right. built up as it, as if it is. But it's a it's it's a it's one it's a one off. Winner plays what they're the seven seed. So they so they got who Phoenix. Phoenix. Yep. Winner got Phoenix. Loser gets the winner of the Grizzlies and the Spurs. And then the winner of that game will take on the Utah Jazz in the one versus eight matchup. But this this game tonight has. A, a significant level of 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 interest and excitement to it. One, because you didn't expect the Lakers to be here. Mm-hmm. Two, it's in terms of like this form, it's the first of its kind playing game. Now I know there mm-hmm. were playing games last year, but like this is part of a of you know a bigger tournament. This is right. like last what they did last year is completely separate to what we're seeing this year. And so the fact that you have two teams uh with the with the magnitude with the with the star level of the warriors and and the lakers uh, involved in it and you've got lebron james you've got anthony davis you've got steph curry mm-hmm. you've got draymond green you've got teams and players you know with rings on their fingers right. it creates like this is going to be this is, <laughs> again it's not even winner go home <laughs> but it's a legit nba finals feel to it yeah, it's a, there, there's a lot of star power here, mm-hmm. and they didn't have that type of star power in Pacers Hornets. They didn't have that type of star right. power, and uh, I mean, Jason Tatum's a big star. We all know who Kimball Walker is. Russell Westbrook is definitely a star. We know who Bradley Bill is, mm-hmm. but it's still it, it wasn't the same type of star power that we're having in 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 this game. This this game, you can make the argument this is a Western Conference Finals type match. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, and you're getting it in a one game setting. Um, you're getting it in this matters to me. I wonder I wonder how you feel about it. You're getting it in a California setting, right? No cow, so cow. That's a big deal out here. At least up here it is. It's a big okay. deal. You know, and you're getting that aspect that regardless, we talked earlier about Kings Lakers and if that's a rivalry or whatever. Bay Area, Los Angeles. Once again, more of a rivalry for the Bay Area than it is for L.A., but it is, it's still some real heat. You're getting two fan bases that um, are pretty ridiculous, if you ask me, but they're passionate. Mm-hmm. All right, They're active, let's say that. They're not always reasonable and sound, but they're active, and, and they're loud. Okay, so you're getting them going back and forth. I love that you just rallied off like four shots at the fan bases, just one after the other after the other. That's solid work. <laughs> two fan bases that... um. Yeah, no, you're not the biggest. Fan. That. Just gonna leave it at I that. Gotcha. I like, right, like Danny in San Francisco. Yeah. I like Monte Hill. I know. I like Joe Shasky. Mm-hmm. 
I like my man uh, Dwayne Deans. Okay. It's about where it ends. I like my man Slim Dread. I like my man Mr. Roscoe's. Uh, kind of where it ends. Yep. <laughs> it's kind of where it ends. I got <laughs> the rest of them. Oh, I don't know about. Oh yeah, Kyle Madsen. He's pretty cool. So you in. like member you like members of the fan bases. Yeah, you. and, it's, and it's, we it's, actually all those people, they have other teams in con- common. Mm, it's kind of Giants, awesome. San Francisco, yeah. 49ers. Okay. Yeah. All right. We kind of go separate ways when it comes but it's, to But it's it's it it certainly has, you know, you're 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 a boxing guy. It has a big fight feel to oh, it. Oh, for sure. It has a big fight yeah. feel to it. Though yeah. <laughs> it's gonna it, it it will honestly be a little bit weird when the game is over. Because it's more of like, okay, you know, the, 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 the Warriors won. Okay, well, that means the Lakers are going to play the Spurs <laughs> and the Grizzlies. So it's like, okay, the Warriors won. What's it mean? Well, it means they're about to embark on a, on a you know, seven-game series against the Phoenix Suns. Yeah. So, like, it has great anticipation right now. It has great build right now. But ultimately, when the game's over, it's going to be like, oh, okay, we're going to see the loser that we're going to see the Warriors of the Lakers again Friday. Right. We're going to see the other team start their series on, you know, Saturday or whatever day that, that, that the, the first round gets started. I think to be honest with you, I think this is a bigger deal for the fan bases to beat the other one. Cause just to beat them in that game, you're not knocking them out of the playoffs. Cause they're going to make the playoffs like we just talked about. Well, but yeah, team. but I think you're dismissing the fact you still do have to win another game. And you that do. game, the second game that's 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 elimination. That is single yeah. elimination. Yeah. You have one night. Anthony Davis back hurts. LeBron reaggravates his ankle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steph is off. Uh, Draymond isn't a dog that day, and it's over. Mm-hmm. You know the season's over, and you're you're either Steph or you're LeBron, and you didn't make the playoffs because yeah. you know that's the story. It's not the Warriors. It's not the Lakers. It's LeBron or Steph didn't make the playoffs, and Steph is going to get a lot more leeway if he doesn't make the playoffs than LeBron James would. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the biggest, you're all about the story. The biggest story in his Lakers tonight and have to play on Friday. And, and I don't care mm. if you're playing. Yeah. Little Sisters are poor. Yeah. They have playing to play. On Friday in, 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 in a must win scenario. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be hooked. Mm-hmm. I'll be watching. Mm-hmm. That's where, <laughs> I it, that much. and that's and that and you you kind of you you saw that a little bit in I think you saw that a little bit in the Pacers Hornets game last night. Mm-hmm. As boring as that game was, it was very much like this is this is it. This is our season. Mm-hmm. And no matter how many jokes we've made about the Indiana Pacers over the last few weeks, th- that's a team with experience. Now, Nate Bjorkson isn't a coach with experience, but the Indiana Pacers players are a team with postseason experience. Right. They knew, regardless of how they feel about their coach, they knew what that moment meant. It was win or go home. Charlotte's still on the come up. They'll, they, they, Charlotte is experiencing the things you desperately want the Sacramento Kings to experience. You know, mm-hmm. the, the Sacramento Kings record in big games, not so good. You know, not so good. Now you've got the Charlotte Hornets. They they have this moment like we're win, we're you know we we, we win and, and we we get another shot. No, nope, they're out. Like they're done. The Pacers have that experience, and it's gonna it's gonna come into play again. I wouldn't be shocked at all if the Pacers beat the Wizards. I wouldn't I, be shocked wouldn't, at all. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked. shocked I'd be disappointed. At all. Yeah, but I wouldn't be shocked. It's funny you say that about like we want the Hornets or we want the Kings to get that kind of Hornets experience. If the Kings played the Grizzlies tonight and what happened to the Hornets happened oh, to the Kings. Oh I mean oh. there would there would be no well we ended the postseason drought. Luke Walton he's got us going in the right direction. He would be the worst coach of all time. <laughs> <It's> accurate. <laughs> It's accurate. Can you absolutely. If they got in and did what the Hornets did last night. That's yeah. absolutely accurate. There are some people that think he's the worst coach of all time now. They have heard uh, those podcasts. They, <laughs> they have nothing nice to say about that man. <laughs> uh, let's bring in our man, Bonte Hill. Of course, Bonte Hill, 95-7, the game, the morning roast in San Francisco. Handles television duties for NBC Sports Bay Area. We've got a big one tonight, Bonte. It feels like... 
you know, obviously there are seating implications, Bonte, but this feels like a just a, a big fight tonight with two heavyweights. Man, it's LeBron James versus Steph Curry, and all your fans can't get enough of it. And LeBron James, uh, in the history here, runs deep. You know what I'm saying? And he loves KG. In fact, all I've been hearing about this, I'm saying, you can believe, you can believe this is LeBron James on the other side. And I get it. Not only is it LeBron James, he'll be the other side, but it's that ugly, purple, waker. Oh, when I see that, it's just like, I know I scared you guys there, Kings fan. Don't worry, you got the good purple. You got the good purple. The little good purple, though, is just like every game that comes with it. Very least, we're better than you. We got 17 better. Blah, 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 blah. So people are charged up for this one in Northern California, man. This is this conference. So, kind of, it's big mistakes right here. It's not just a playing game. It feels like you're going to have to do something with somebody's levity. Either they're going to add to it or they're going to get mocked. For losing this playing game. Uh, Bonte Hill, by the way, broadcasting live from Kenny's internet. It's like, <laughs> I think Bonte Hill broadcasting. Bonte, the, 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 the running joke on here is my internet looks like a um, one of those Bruce Lee movies sometimes. And, and, and that's what the, the streets are saying. You're staring like right now. We, we, we can hear you. Okay, oh, Bonte, hear you. Look, Bonte didn't appreciate the joke. <laughs> Bonte was like, "Oh yeah, I'll show you Kenny's. I got, I got Kenny's internet right here. I'll show you Kenny's internet." <laughs> wait, 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 Bonte, don't do this. Don't do this. <laughs> Bonte, don't hang up, Bonte. Bonte, don't hang up, Bonte. Don't do this, Bonte. Who knew? Who knew? Rick Adelman confirmed, confirmed. Bonte Hill, not so much. Not so much. We've been riding Danny in San Francisco about the wrong guy this whole time. Damn. You, you just oh, know. Yesterday, yesterday we were navigating Zoom. We were navigating press conference. Flawless. No issues. Of course things can't go perfectly two days in a row. Oh, I got real Why tears, man. Hey. I got real tears right now, man. Oh, oh, Dante, you. Dante <laughs> hung up on us like... <laughs> <laughs> like Chris Weber like, hung up on the other show. On people. <laughs> Bonte, no, Bonte, don't do this. Don't do this, Bonte. Don't do this, Bonte. I will spend the next decade trashing you, Bonte, if you do this. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. What are we doing? Oh, real tears, man. Real tears. I got real I can't tears lie, but, 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 but Bonte, that, that was not a solid connection, so it might not be the worst thing uh, that Bonte <laughs> got disconnected. Uh, let's welcome him for the second time. He is a member of the Black Bottle Boys. Ladies and gentlemen, Bonte Hill. <laughs> Let me get some air horns. <laughs> you feel more at home now, Bonte. <laughs> right now. I don't know what's going on. I don't know I just got a new phone yesterday. What the heck is going on? And do a little bit of phone. Okay. Hey, Monte trying to talk to us from, from the from the Motorola Metro call. Okay, let's let's do this. That that didn't sound good. We all know that sounded like ass. So we're just gonna let that go. Tell Bonte, Jesse, tell Bonte we're good. We know, we know he is absolutely <laughs> pressed for time. We know he's pressed for time. Tell him we love him. Uh, we'll catch him. You know, we'll 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 catch him in a couple of days uh, when things may be a little oh, settled down man. for him. But it's 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 good. <laughs> we were wrong. We were worried about Rick Adelman all morning long, and it was Bonte Hill that turned heel on us. Bonte Hill just went full Seth Rollins and hit us in the back of the head with a steel chair. <laughs> Hulk Hogan walked down that oh aisle. Whose side goodness. is he on? And leg dropped Kenny Caraway right in the middle of the ring at Daytona oh, Beach. Jeez, wow, that might have been the moment of the week. That was some funny stuff. All righty. Well, so what do y'all want to do now, huh? <laughs> what, what, what do y'all talk about now? Tony the Rooster, guys. Tony the Rooster here. No. He's being thirteen twenty. <laughs> uh. 
If you have a better uh, connection than Bonte Hill, you can call us. 916-349-1320. I get the feeling. Jesse, can you confirm here uh, real quick? Did you just hang up on him the first time around? Were you just like, this is not working? Did you just hang up on him? No, he actually put the hook on us. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure. Because that would have been even funnier if Jesse was like, this isn't working. Like, I'm going to hang up on him. Um, uh, we, uh, he, not all is lost. Not all is lost. We may try to reconnect with Bonte oh. later. We may try to reconnect with Can him. we find, let somebody send Bonte a landline. Can we send Bonte, <laughs> who still has a landline? I was just about to say, who's got one of those? Anybody got one of those? The last time I had one, I signed up for my, you know, cable and everything. And it was the bundle. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll have a landline. Not once did I use that landline. Get it. Oh, man. I'm dying. Get what a it. mess. Out of here. In the chat. Call us up if you have a landline and call us from that landline. As a matter of fact, we've got some time to kill because we were supposed to be talking about to Bonte <laughs> Hill about the Lakers Warriors. So if you want to chime in with your expert opinion on the Lakers Warriors, please do give us a call. 916-349-1320. <laughs> um, I, I do think it was interesting. I, I was able to make this out <laughs> at the beginning of his monologue there was that this was big for the fan bases. It is. This was big. This, this, I, 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 let, me, let me rephrase that. Let me, let me rephrase that. Scratch that from the record, please. He said this was big for the Warrior fan bases. Mm -hmm. The Warriors fan base, excuse me. And it's like, all right, cool. Like, is it, one, is it big for the Lakers fan base? And two, is it only big because it's LeBron? Yeah. Or is it, is it because they're the defending champion? No, or are that, they the defending champion with LeBron James? Is that why? It's, it's LeBron James. It's um, LeBron James first and foremost. Get that right. They hate LeBron James. They hate LeBron James. The Warrior fan base hates LeBron James. So it's him first and foremost. Number two, I told you before, I mentioned it before, they've really been, oh, the Lakers, rivalry. What voice uh, is that? That's the Warriors fan voice? Is that what that was? <laughs> What was that voice? It's it's uh, Tyrese Halliburton. Voice. Oh my! That was that was Tyrese in the second half of the Zoom. No, that's that's my Warriors people. Oh, Lakers! It's time for the rivalry. Oh, you don't have no rivalry with the Lakers. Can we just check on Tyrese real quick? I'm not sure if this is the clip, but I'm dying to see. Let's let's check on the multiple voices of Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm growing with guys every day. Uh, you know, continue to have conversations and learn more about them. Uh, you know, that's just important to me as a human there being, you know, even before I'm a basketball player is just, you know, knowing the people that I'm <laughs> Tyrese, Tyrese, <laughs> Tyrese went from Stefan or Kel to Urkel. <laughs> Just in one, one, just one yeah, I mean, fell I'm, swoop. I'm growing with guys every day. Uh, Ladies, man. You know, continue to have conversations and learn more about them. Uh, you know, that's just important <laughs> to me as a human being, you know, even before I'm a basketball player. is just, you know. <laughs> I how don't does know, that man. happen? I don't know. How does that happen? That's almost like, um, have you seen that clip of, the? it's a football player. I don't, I don't know what it was, but he dove for the ball in the end zone and it looks like he gets up without using his arms have you seen that yes yeah <laughs> yes. like, wait a minute what did i just watch yeah <laughs> what the hell yeah was that? that's wild because <laughs> that was trying to be like reenacted forever <laughs> oh, man. oh man i don't think i've cried this much on this show as in the last 18 minutes that's, uh, that's some funny stuff man. but no it is it is definitely um, LeBron. Uh, no. Okay. Thanks, Monty. What, what? <laughs> he didn't say that yesterday. I don't think. He no. He started really a lot of his answers with yeah. Well, and then he would move <laughs> on. He like everything started with yeah. Let's. I never thought I would say this. Let's see if Disco Tim uh, can say <laughs> this. Oh, Disco Tim. Podcast. Disco Tim. What's up, baby? Hey, not much. I, I just wanted to fill in. You know, I know you had a little time. You needed to get some filling, and I we appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. What's on your mind? Oh, um, two things, really. First of all, I feel a lot, a lot more comfortable knowing that Monty McNair is now calling the shot. I feel like there's an adult in the room, and he knows how, he knows what he's doing, and I trust him and I believe him. And I appreciate what you said, Danny, just a few minutes ago about the positive vibes. You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of my deal. 
You know, yes, sir. You got to be positive if you're a team fan. You can't just keep thinking, "Whoa, it's me! Whoa, it's me!" Let's let's throw out the coach, get in another coach, wait another few years for this thing to do. It's going to happen now, and it's because mm-hmm. all the positive vibes that's going on. You know how it is, but it gets. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's going yeah. in a good direction, and uh, I think positive vibes, man. I know that that's just. And it's a simple way of doing it, but that's how I got to deal with being a Kings fan. Yeah. And finally, I know that was a lot, but finally, Dan, Rick Adelman, if you yes. can just thank him for, for all of us Kings fans, man, he is royalty. And thank you for getting him on the show. Yes, indeed. You're welcome. <laughs> we knew all along that there were going to be it in the bag the whole time. <laughs> I wonder but, what the BetQL odds would have been for Bonte Hill bailing would, on the interview versus Rick Adam showing that up. Been a, that would have been a one star. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, BetQL would have said, stay away from this one. Um, Disco Tim, though, he says something that I say all the time. It's going to happen. They're going to make the playoffs. Uh-huh. They're going to get in there and give us some good memory. When it's going to happen, I don't know. You know what I'm saying, but it's going to happen. Number one, the case, the number one case study is um, the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I mean, the Cleveland Browns. I know it's a league where less people make, you know, all yeah, that. Yeah, but do we need to see the follow up here? Like, do we need to see the follow up because they just made it last year? You yeah. really are you 100 percent confident they're gonna make it again this year? Like, are they contenders? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know that. But I said before people would be a lot more okay with where things are going if we had a Minnesota Timberwolves situation. Because the Timberwolves, literally, they actually literally have been worse than the Kings. Mm-hmm. They literally, the, the winning percentage, all that other stuff. But they got that hey, one Butler. playoff, that one playoff round where they lost in five games in the first round, and nobody mentions them. Yeah, And I think Kings fans would, would look at this completely different if it got was Got in that. on the last day? Got in on the last day, lost in five to the Rockets, mm-hmm. and yeah, but they've literally been worse than the Kings. Yeah. So I, I think, but I think it'll happen, man. It'll happen. I just don't know when. I know it'll well, it better needs, happen next year. That's what that's, that's what I'm <laughs> saying, and 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 that's I, I, probably the. We, we can talk about you know the, the, the lack of positivity and the frustration, and and we can talk about that stuff here. Uh, in just a minute, but that's that was the biggest takeaway from yesterday is goals have been set and the goals aren't growing. The mm-hmm. goals aren't figuring is, this out. The goal now is getting to the playoffs or, mm-hmm. you know, Luke was specific and he said, if you know, if the playing situation is still in play next year, you know, that's what we're talking about. We want to get to the playing with the chance to get to the playoffs, but we want to be playing in the post season. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll talk more about that. And Rick Adelman joins us. Yes, sir. Top of the three o'clock hour and Dilo and KC continue here on Sacramento's number one sports station. If you're getting out of the car, make sure you pull up the Odyssey app or go to Twitch or go to YouTube. You don't want to miss our conversation with Rick Adelman next here on ESPN 1320. Oh, that was funny. That was some funny stuff. That is funny. Hey. Nah, he was, yeah, he was, he was busted. (laughs) <laughs> he was busted and then yep and then jimmy called that team out in a vicious way <laughs> yeah that's fine like if he's it, like if that if that's fine with him if that doesn't interfere with what he's doing that's that's fine okay yeah yeah we'll get him real quick we can get in today. We don't always let him shoot. Mm-hmm. But we can get in today. Mm-hmm. Get that shot up. I was telling when you stepped out, D- Danny got me like so relaxed over this Rick Adelman thing. Uh-huh. I I kind of like stopped the prep for the interview. Like I have the the framework of of where I was going, yeah. and the, and and the idea. By the way, like I think I've told you this before. The way I don't speak for Kenny. The way I prep for interviews is the first question to me is usually the most important and that's the one that I think can start the conversation and then I expect the conversation to carry the rest of the interview and everything else I write down is just backup unless it's super important like unless it's a newsworthy like a super newsworthy thing um 
I try to let the conversation dictate where we go. It's back on. It's back on. It's back on. Yeah. So I'm just going <laughs> to jot a couple of things down here. Don't mind me. <laughs> oh, man. Rick Adaman on that. <laughs> I saw someone say Rick Adaman got a landline. I hope so. I hope so. I hope he's not on the Bonte Hill plan. <laughs> okay. Come on. Okay. Let's go. Okay. You do that for uh, the three o'clock hour? Okay. That'd be dope. Yeah, three three twenty would be <laughs> Yeah. Let's see what we can get. <laughs> Um, we got to get Pete on, man. I just saw Pete like that tweet with Rick Adam. And we get, I got to call Pete, man. Yeah. Pete showing us love. Yo, do you, oh yeah, I see you see it. You just retweeted it. Um, uh, our guy who picked up, um, McQueen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was love right there. Yeah. He got that tonic water and everything, man. <laughs> He's set to go. Man, this has been so awesome the way y'all have embraced uh, McQueen and Luke and Belair, Luke Belair. Not, not the other Luke. We appreciate the way that you've embraced Luke Belair. I'm just going to shorten it to Belair. <laughs> there's some, there's some uh, liquor stores in the area who like, yo, how did they get the blue bottles already? Like, hey, <laughs> it is what it is. I don't know what to tell you, fam. Come on now. You know, we'd have been on, get the, on my we'd level. We'd have been get on, on my level bridge with these things, man. Stop playing. I love Matt. Is that your reaction or Danny in San Francisco? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Where's Pete's tweet? I know Pete was showing us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know why that song's in my head. What is it? Oh, I, I was like, what are you doing? Oh, I, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I know what you're doing. Yeah, man. Got that, that get, get a good gun in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <sighs> Shout out to the King's Herald for all the love they show the show. It's a big shout out to the King's Herald. I was listening to their podcast. I was listening to King's Pulse, though. Man. Don't turn that on if you want to feel good. <laughs> Rick Adelman coming up at the top of the 3 o'clock hour. Member of the 2021 Hall of Fame class and, of course, the greatest coach in the history of the Sacramento Kings. Uh, again, he's going to be with us at the top of the 3 o'clock hour. Bonte Hill, allegedly, uh, is going to join us at 3.30. <laughs> I wouldn't put anything past this Bonte Hill, though. Uh, Bonte Hill going to join us, hopefully, from the landline uh, yeah. coming up. at the, Or hopefully he took his new phone back and, and, and got a different one. Uh, but he he's had that joint us. like Bibby got. He's <laughs> with the, with the, with the, it's, it's running off Windows. It's, it's running off Windows 02. Uh, let's get our man Mitch from New Jersey in here real quick. Mitch, what's good, baby? <laughs> I got to be honest. I think I understood Monte better than what Mitch said. All I got was a rotary phone. Oh, I said, give him a shot. He the there you go. Okay. All right. I, I think this play is silly. I, you know the Warriors and I both of you. I'm hoping LeBron can go home with early and need some vacation. And the baseball, my Dodgers, is this some type of injury problem that's uh, hitting baseball and basketball? Thank you, my Dodgers. Uh, well, 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 well Mitch, first of all, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, oh hold on, hold boy, on. you might have just Mitch, lost I thought the we were boy. Cool. Wow, you Mitch, just lost we were the cool. room, Mitch. Ouch. I thought we were cool. You're talking about my Dodgers. That's going to leave Mitch, I thought we was boys. Mm. Talking about my Dodgers. Mm. Can't be serious, man. Can't be serious, Dodger. Mitch. You let me down. You let me down. He's a Dodger fan. It's unacceptable. 
he may never get on the line again now. After that, <laughs> he, I actually, I've known Mitch. For, I've, I've heard from Mitch for years. I didn't know he was a Dodger fan. That surprised well, me. Mitch, Mitch can come on here. I welcome all Dodger fans. There was another guy. What's my man's name? I forgot. He's Jason in the Jones chat. is who you're thinking of. Yeah, Jason Jones. Too. He can get on here. <laughs> there was an epic rant uh, the night the Dodgers won the World Series. We had to do a J Street Vibes and not recorded. Uh, all pre-recording. Jason Jones let out. It was like it was like Biggie uh, before Long Kiss Goodnight. Like oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. And I let him do it. I said, "Go ahead, man. You, you got, tape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got some. You got some built up frustration for the last twenty some years. Go ahead, say it all. Say what you got to say." Yeah, he let it out. But um, all Dodger friends are welcome because we didn't talk about their fraudulent championship last year and how they ain't going to repeat this year. So they can come on here whenever. You feel better? You I, don't got even that know why, I don't even know why they got a whole ring. But you got a half a ring. An engagement ring. <laughs> yeah, right. A promise ring. That's what they should have got. <laughs> That's funny. I can't even be mad at that. That's funny. But you've got that out of your system. We can we can we can we can get back to the Kings now because Rick Adaman's gonna join us coming up here at the the top of the three o'clock hour. Uh, Indeed. Uh, indeed. But you just talked about Minnesota, how Minnesota really kind of gets bailed out for uh, how truly, truly awful they are because of the one year that they made the playoffs with Jimmy Butler. And I think that ties in everything that Rick, uh, excuse me, it ties in everything that Monty McNair was talking about yesterday mm-hmm. and that the reason Minnesota made the playoffs. Remember, again, this was on the last day of the season. The reason Minnesota made the playoffs is because they swung for the fences and got Jimmy Butler mm-hmm. didn't work out at all yeah but it broke that streak that's what we're talking about here who is the guy that monty mcnair can go get and there needs to be some level of dysfunction there needs to be some level of unhappiness there seems to be some level there needs to be some level of like contract concern to really truly be able to get a a, a player of that caliber here to sacramento and that was the fence that those people in Minnesota swung for. They hit it. It was able to break the streak. Again, can you imagine if they had acquired Jimmy Butler? Can you imagine all, everything exactly the same except they lose that last game to Denver? Mm, mm, mm. One, we wouldn't be so worried about this. We wouldn't be as worried about this playoff streak. I know it would still really, really upset fans, but there yeah. would still be a team worse than us, yeah. and it would be Minnesota. And Minnesota, they're not showing any signs of being better to me. No, I mean, they've got, but, and it, it's even crazier with them because they, we mentioned it before. They've got three number one picks in that time span. Yeah. Three number one picks. How many did the Kings have? Zero. None. You know what I mean? So they, I, I look what they do. Um, it doesn't, it has no bearing on what happened with the Kings. They can be as bad as they want to be. That doesn't change the fact that the Kings haven't made the playoffs and I don't know how long, but we got on this subject because, It'll it'll happen. That's what I try to get. Disco Tim was saying, hey, we got to keep the faith and all this other stuff. And I look, I completely understand somebody that hears me or Disco Tim say keep the faith. And they say, shut the hell up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I get it. All right. But I'm just telling you, it's going to happen. They're going to make the playoffs. In, the, in my opinion, it needs to be next year or there needs to be a lot of changes. But whether it's next year, two years from now, three years from now, they're going to make the playoffs. Just gotta gotta hang in there. Gotta hang in there. I, I don't know, it's, but there are people who've been hanging in here a long time. You realize th- three years as as uh, as someone in the I think it was someone in the chat house once said, and I believe we named a show after this. You know, in three years the playoff drought can vote. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. Like, and yeah. to say, hey, hang on, a, you know, a couple of more years, the playoff drought's going to go away to college. Yeah, like no, man, like my. my, my the original assessment is right. You've got to execute this now. Yes. I, yes. And maybe, I, and, and, and I think one interesting thing to, to follow is because, uh, again, we, sometimes we get engulfed in the loudest. Like, we, we have a lot of work. Part of our job here is, you know, we've got to be on social media. Mm-hmm. We've got to make sure the Rick Adelman graphic gets out there to everybody. We've got to make sure that our clips of the show get out there. We want you to know what we're doing. We want to bring in new people. We want to get people who have never heard of the YouTube channel or the Twitch channel or have never heard of BSPN 1320. We want to get you in here. So we're, we're, we're engulfed in social media uh, a, a lot. And sometimes 
you know, we've talked about how social media is, it's like a stream of consciousness. Like it's a, it's, it's a direct thought. You can get something you're thinking in that exact moment out to the world. And sometimes that thought isn't filtered. Mm -hmm. And normally when that's the case, it's something out of frustration. It's something out of some sort of extreme reaction or, or, or emotion. So we get in there and we get into the world of King's Twitter and we see everyone's frustration and their anger and some, you know, some, their almost resignation, like, huh. We're really keeping Luke Walton like crow. You know what I mean? Like it's easy to get engulfed in that. But come September or October, whenever the regular season starts, October, you know, pandemic stuff aside, there's going to be 17,000 people at the Golden One Center. Mm -hmm. Until there's not, none of this really matters. Until people actually stop going to the games and still people, until people actually turn away from the organization, None of this matters, and I don't think that that's ever going to happen again. I don't think that. Or am I encouraging either. it to happen? By the way, right? I don't think that'll happen. I know um, our guy John. Um, he, he he's not you know turning in his season tickets from everything that I know, but I know he had a post the other day where he was like, you know, the sales team they got a hard job, you know, and and season tickets got on season ticket holders got him on that thread, and was like, yeah, I'm done, I'm over the team, and all this other stuff, and. Number one, I don't. <laughs> you can think he's he's good or, or or not or whatever. I don't know how after fifteen years, Luke Walton coming back for essentially one more year. Like if everything goes bad, I don't know how that is driving people over the edge. Well, I don't get I, that. I I I think part of it is. I I, I think part of it is normally like the the Kenny Nats. The Reggie Theuses, the Eric Musselmans, those guys who don't, it's, they don't last for more than two years. Mm -hmm. And I think the belief was, well, now that Monte's here and, you know, he's in the deep end of the pool, he'll bring in his own coach. Mm -hmm. Well, it turned out that that's not the case. And here we are, by the way, it's Wednesday after the regular season ends. No coach has been fired. Right. So, right. It, it, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's more of a, a strategy, a strategy to this, then we recognize, right. but I don't think that's the case because I believe that, you know, the, the, the as, as I said to you the other day, the hourglass is turned over. Now mm -hmm. the sand is running to the bottom for Monty McNair. This is his team. And the clock has started on him, his decision to keep Luke Walton. If everything that he said was true. And I believe that it is, it was his decision. It was a basketball decision. And as part of his resources uh, that he's been allotted to go out there and to make this team a playoff team, then, then, then this is th that's what this is. The Sacramento Kings are now Monty McNair's team, and he has chosen Luke Walton to be the head coach. Right, and I and I get that, but even with that, like they didn't sign Luke Walton to a five year extension. Mm -hmm. They they said he's going to be back next year, and if he doesn't get the team to the playoffs, he will be fired. They didn't say that, but that's what I, that's what we all understand. So I'm saying, you're saying, everybody's saying it needs to happen next year. But if it doesn't happen next year, it's not like, well, damn, yeah. we got to deal with Luke Walton for the next four years. Like, no, he's going to be fired. I think it's also why if, if I think what people will look at if if it happens next year or God freaking forbid it happens during the season where I don't. Well, I don't want to say God forbid if things are bad enough, you've got to move forward. But mm -hmm. I think in either one of those situations, and I think happening during the season is the worst case scenario. But in either one of those situations, people will look at it like, why the hell didn't you do this last year? Like, what more did you need to see as we trek towards 35 wins? You know, if he's trekking towards 35 wins, which was the, you know, the, the, the win percentage spread out over 82 games, as James Ham told us yesterday. Why didn't you do this already? Because there are because things be, that there are things be you need I to see. You so. there, okay, there's things you need to see. And everybody here, you, John Bull, everybody on Twitter, you think you know, but in the words of Jim Mora, you think you know, but you really don't know. Like you have an idea, but you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you don't you, know about Luke? You don't, you don't, yeah, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You think you know. Everybody thinks they know. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with their opinion. Let's be real. You don't know. 
You don't know what's going to happen next year. You don't know how this team is going to play under him next year. You don't know how he's going to coach next year. It's all an educated guess. So for if, if it does not work out and he's not good, yeah, you can say I told you so, and it was an educated guess. It was, it was this is what I think of him, and this is where I think he's going to live. You don't know. Regardless of how much you think you know, you don't know. So we there need are, another year to know? Is that what you're saying? I think we'll, we'll know for sure after next year. Here's here here's like because I know people wanted like a more stiff reaction from us yesterday. They wanted us to scream and yell at Luke, and I I, I felt like that would be hypocritical hip, hypocritical at this point mm -hmm. because if you like Tyrese Halliburton and you like Delon Wright and you like Terrence Davis and you've liked the limited moves that Monty McNair has made as the general manager of the Sacramento Kings, then you've got to trust him in this decision. I don't like it. I think it was the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. But I don't get paid to be the general manager of the Sacramento Kings. Monty McNair does. So I'm going to trust him that this was the right decision. And if it's wrong, well, we'll deal with it then. You're listening to D-Lo and KC on ESPN 1320 KIFM, West Sacramento KRX Q, HD2 Sacramento and Odyssey Station, and driven by Lashers, Elk Grove Dodge. We are thrilled to bring in uh, one of the newest members of the Basketball Hall of Fame. And, of course, the greatest coach in the history of of the Sacramento Kings, Rick Adaman. Coach, thanks for joining us. Uh, just curious, obviously it's a tremendous honor to go into the Hall of Fame, but is it a little bit more special uh, knowing you're going in with Chris Weber and what you two meant to the city of Sacramento? Yeah, I think that's really, uh, you know, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the kind words, but <clears throat> yeah, it, it means a lot. I think that time in Sacramento was so special to everybody who was there and it was a special team and Chris was the best player, and it's, so it's it's really neat that we're going to end together and uh, looking forward to it. Coach Adamant, I, I want to congratulate you as well um, as, as a son of the city, born and raised. You know, I was right in the middle of uh, that great time that you had here in Sacramento. I mean, you mean so much to this franchise in the city, so congratulations to you on that. I, I want to, um, no, no problem. I want to ask you a question, though. Before the 1998-99 season, you take over as a Sacramento Kings head coach. I know you and you didn't take that job unless you thought there was something that you could do there or you, or you felt like, hey, we can turn this around or I can do things uh, successfully here. What was your thoughts? You couldn't imagine what ended up happening when you took that job. What was your thoughts when you took that job with the Kings? No, I couldn't imagine what happened, how it all came together. I think the biggest thing for me is I just went through a really bad experience at Golden State after, after a success in Portland. And I wanted to coach again, and I was just trying to figure out uh, how to do it. And the, one of the, the biggest thing was uh, I knew people in Sacramento. I worked with Jeff Petrie and Wayne Cooper in Portland, and I trusted them. And I just, uh, they were very optimistic. They could turn the thing around. They had great ideas. And, uh, but you know, it's just, it's amazing that uh, during that time, uh, they signed Vlade Divac to a, as a free agent, which was great, which I just saw that coming. But then Chris Weber was traded in Sacramento, but everybody says he didn't want to come. Mm -hmm. And I thought we could, we could get that done. So I, you know, you, that's two pretty good chips you have right there. Mm -hmm. And everything just kind of fell together. The first year was, uh, really a year for, we were just trying to figure things out. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, we added different players and uh, Pacius talk that came, came around. Uh, he was he was there already, and I really liked him. And then we just made some really nice trades. So I, I just felt that if you're with people that you trust and you know, good things are going to happen. And I, I knew the area was really nice. Uh, I was from Portland, so it wasn't that far away from me and my family. And uh, so it, yeah, everything just seemed to, to look good. I never thought it'd be eight years. That's something you don't get to have happen very often that late. Uh, Hall of Famer coach uh, Rick Adaman with us here on ESPN 1320. Coach, how important was Jeff Petrie to your success here in Sacramento? Oh, he's really important. I think he was a smart guy. He had great people around him. He had, like I said, Wayne Cooper. He had Scotty Sterling. He had Jerry Reynolds. I just had a really good staff, and I think, you know, Jeff was smart. 
but he knew the league, and I think he knew what he wanted to do. And he, I saw it in Portland when he was in Portland, took over. Uh, you know, we had pretty pretty good success there. So I just you couldn't have done it without him. I mean, he's one of the guys who were. How long was he at Sacramento? I mean, he was he was really the, one of the people who really set the team on the on the map, and I I couldn't have done it without him. Coach, um, the combination of yourself, Jeff Petrie, and, and the guy that I feel is underrated in that entire run, uh, Pete's coach, coach Pete Carrillo, um, that was an a, a unbelievable combination of what you guys were able to do, revolutionizing, in my opinion, the game offensively. How did that? How did you get Coach Carrillo here in Sacramento? How did that come about? Well, Pete was already there. Um, uh, Jeff had him as assistant coach yeah, when I took over. Uh, we talked about Pete. I certainly, I mean, he was already a Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, Pete, we talked about it. And he could do nothing but help. You know, he's a great offensive mind. Uh, the thing about Pete is he knew so much. He would throw things out there, but he, he never tried to, you know, put his impact too much on on the team or what you're trying to do. But I trusted him again. And I just knew he, you know, his reputation spoke for itself. And when we put that that offense together, there he had a big input in putting that. But uh, you know, you don't put an offense together like that unless you have really good players, and we had really good players. Mm -hmm. And two of those players you had mentioned, uh, Vlade coming, and then the the, the trade for Chris right. Weber. Uh, how long did it take for you and Chris uh, to really establish a solid relationship? Well, you know, I met with Chris uh, when they said he, he didn't want to be in Sacramento. And we sat down and we had a talk. And I, I felt, you know, I got along in, with pretty good players in Portland. And Clyde Drexler and some really good, Buck Williams, really good players. And I felt like I could communicate with him if I just, we just had a chance to sit down and talk. And we did that. And he was very open. I told him what I wanted to do, you know, what I thought about him, what kind of player he was. And I, you know, I, I just said, give it a chance. And I think that he really had to because he was traded there. But I think he came around after that meeting, and he really liked Bob Pilate. And as we added people, he, you know, he, he was it was perfect fit for him. So I, I just think you know, any player, whether they're a great player or a good player, uh, if you put them in a position to succeed, and they see that. They see that I can I can get this done. They're going to go along. They're going to be very really receptive. They're going to be uh, great for the team, and that's that's what he did. Coach, that uh, the, the first couple of years that you had uh, Jason Williams here. I mean, as a, as a young kid growing up in this city. I mean, he he brought something different. He showed uh, what the game could be with imagination and, and, and the things that he can do on the court. None of that happens, Coach, if you don't let him be Jason. If you came in and he came in as a first as a rookie and you put the shackles on him, we don't get that experience. We don't get to see him out there. What what about his game in your coaching style said, I'm I know it might be a little different sometimes, but I'm gonna let this guy do what he does uh best. What, what, what how did that decision come about for you? Well he was he was like you said, he was such a unique player. And he had ability and ambition that you can't you can't teach on the court. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the hardest decisions we ever made was trading him because he was so unique in the way he played. And, you know, he, he really did set the tone for the Sacramento Kings. Mm -hmm. I mean, with him and Chris and Vladi, I mean, his flair, I still, I can give you an example, I, I still remember in Madison Square Garden, and he's on a fast break all by himself. And he throws off the board to Chris. Mm -hmm. And I looked at that, I said, you know, that's really not real smart. Let's see what he can do and let's let him go. And, and, he, and he proved to be a, such a good player in the league as he as he matured and got better and better. He won a championship in Miami. I mean, he's a great kid. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I really, really struggled, Jeff and I, about, about trading him. Mm -hmm. 
And then obviously trading him brought in Mike Bibby, which which you right. know kind of took you guys to to an entirely different level. Is there a, a particular moment, like you just mentioned, the Jay Will Chris Weber moment at Madison Square Garden? Is there a particular moment during that run where you were perhaps the most exciting team in basketball that really stands out to you? Oh, well, that's a good question. I, you know, I just um, yeah, we we traded for Mike at that time, and, and it's. Uh, we just thought he was such a solid fit for us, and he was a really consistent outside shooter, besides a creator on that point guard. So we thought he would really fit in with what we had. Uh, but you know, I, I just look back on that time, and those guys were unbelievable. And I still look back at that playoff series, the Lakers, where we, we lost that series. Mm-hmm. But they set the tone for how the league was going to play. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people copied. The way that we played, yeah. and the, again, you have to. I talked to you earlier about you have to give credit to the players when they buy into something. And the thing about I loved about that, I think it was just a fun team to be around. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a joy to go there every day and practice at the games. So I think about that. I just think about how easy it was with that group, and it was so much fun to, to create things because they they were very creative. I think it was the smartest team. I've ever seen as far as you know, we talked about we weren't that people said we weren't that good defensively. Yeah, we were. In the playoffs we were really good because our guys were so smart and they took advantage of their skills. And I, I think that's what set them apart is they were so intelligent. Coach, um you 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 were the head of a team that not only was exciting um in the league, but it was also um one of the marquee teams in the league. I mean, they even sent you guys to Tokyo because they, they wanted to show you guys the style of play and, and the character that you guys had, the greatest show on court. Everybody knows that. I mean, you, you guys, like you mentioned, changed the way the game was played for a long time. I mean, do you ever sit back and you've you had a lot of success? You went to the NBA Finals twice in Portland, right? Like, you've had a lot of success. But I may be biased, but I feel like your greatest coaching job was here in Sacramento and what you were able to achieve. Do you ever sit back and say, man, it sucks that we lost no two and everything that happened, but we left our mark on this league. Yeah, no, I, I think about it all the time, especially when this honor came. <clears throat> it kind of just brought back all the memories mm-hmm. and the people that were around you in the, in the city. I mean, you talk about the team was unbelievable. Our crowd was incredible. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just see so you walked in there and we had a real advantage. Whoever came in there, they were really intimidated. And so I think back about it all the time. And I, uh, in fact, I, I really think about it a lot when my son David is assistant coach at Denver. Mm-hmm. And I, I watched all their games. And that kid, they have Jokic. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would have loved to have him in Sacramento. Because mm-hmm. he was, he's special. And he should be MVP. I, I never seen a guy as gifted and makes the game so easy. But he kind of reminds me of that Sacramento team, the way he plays. Yeah. You know, that's the way we played. So, yeah, I think about it all the time, especially with this honor. Um, I think about all the people that were involved. And, again, the fans and the time we had there was special. Yeah. Wow. Coach, so, I, I, things I'm haven't gone so well since you've been gone. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure you're not aware of that. And I'm sure it's never, ever brought up to you. Uh, <laughs> can you – You've been around so many great coaches and, you know, we, we, we heard yesterday, Luke Walton is going to remain the coach of the Sacramento Kings. And, you know, there's, there's just been coach after coach after coach after coach ever since you left. But what quantifies, like, can you quantify, like, can you explain, like, what is, what makes a great coach? Well, that's, that's really a good question because it's, it's, it varies. There's so many different types of coaches and what they do, but I, I mentioned it before. I think a, a coach has to identify the team. You have to identify the talent you have. Number one, you have to have talent. That's obvious. You, know, you don't get you aren't good unless you have talent. But when you get the talent, you have to find a way to let the players know that you know this is how you can succeed as a player and as a team. And I think coaches have to identify with that. And I think you also you mentioned about Jason Williams. You have to let him play, you know, mm-hmm. and, but also have a little bit of restraint about it. 
I just think that's what you have to do. Is is like, it's different now. The game is different. I mean, three point shooting and everything that goes on. But I still think the consistency in coaching is to identify your team. What are their strengths? And go to those strengths, and then try to work on the things that aren't quite your strengths, but get better in those areas. I think really and honestly, sometimes they don't give a coach a chance to develop that over the years. They're just they're too quick to make the decision to get rid of them. Mm. Uh, even when I was there eight years, of course, I didn't agree with the decision to let me go. <laughs> and that was the Maloose decision. Mm. But I thought that team still had something left in it. You know, mm. Chris was hurt one time. We, he came back. I still thought that team could win, but I, I think you, you got to give a guy a chance to go. And I, again, I was, I was so lucky in Portland. I was there 12 years as assistant and head coach, Sacramento Way, and I went to Houston for four solid years with a really good team. But each team was different. Mm-hmm. You didn't coach in the same way. You had to, you had to adjust the style. I mean, if I, I had to yell me, well, I'm going to post him up. And we're not going to run as much as I like. Right. That's how we're going to be successful. And that's what you have to do. Coach Rick Adelman, Hall of Famer Rick Adelman, I just want to say personally, you're welcome in this city. I don't know when the last time you were in Sacramento, but just know you can come here anytime. You you can come to any restaurant and get a, a meal and a drink. You can come on this show anytime. You are one of the legends in this city, and we appreciate you, and we are so happy that you finally made it to the Hall of Fame where you where you belong. I really appreciate the thoughts, and I, you know, we'd love to get back to Sacramento sometime and visit. Uh, it's a special place. You know, like I said, we raised some kids in Portland, we raised some other kids in Sacramento, and two great places. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. Fun. Well, again, Coach, we know you don't do a lot of these interviews. Thank you so much for uh, giving us a chance to talk to you and our fan base a, ch- uh, a chance to hear you. And, again, congratulations on the Hall of Fame nod. Well-deserved. Well, I, pr- I appreciate you having me on. Thank okay, you, that is uh, the Hall of Famer, Coach Rick man. Adam in there. Man. Woo! Come on. Man. Come on, man. I wasn't going to play the about. air horns with, with with the legend. I, I wasn't going to do that. But now that he's gone, some more air horns for that Hall of Famer. Man, oh, you, man, you you talk about stirring up some memories. Oh, oh got goodness, chills. man. Got chills. I ain't even lying to you. I got Thanks chills. to uh, Deuce and Mo. Thanks to Pete Youngman. Thanks to Jill. Thanks to everybody who was uh, locked into that conversation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sharing it all over social media. Man, hearing him talk about Jay Will and just you've got to let guys play. Yeah. You've got to let them play. You've got to let them be who they are. And it, and it, and it you also have to be a certain – type of coach to be able to do that you have mm-hmm. to be secure in your message to be able to let guys play especially when you have such a unique style yeah. like I, I i you know i we, we've got to stay out of the chat during conversations especially <laughs> ones you know with guys like rick adaman but i i glanced over and i saw a line that said tony la Russa would have suspended jay will <laughs> yes, for a week I saw that too. and it's like you know there's probably some validity to that and rick yeah. even says himself okay maybe that's not the smartest move yeah but man, look at how these fans react, and then to hear him talk about uh, how torn they were in moving Jay Will. Oh, God man. damn, man! What a conversation! I, I wish you know. Again, we all know Rick doesn't do this very often. Yeah. I would have loved to have kept him on the phone, you know, Rick Ross style for an hour. But uh, <laughs> the fact that uh, he spent that much time with us talking about that team again, it's it's uh, it's it's an honor that's that's long overdue, and to yeah. hear him talk so fondly about this team is amazing. Yeah. And, and and you hit it right on the head. Him understanding what is best for that particular team that he he had. You know, he, he told the story like you just mentioned to Jay Well in the Garden. And yeah. I, I I know Rick Adelman wasn't brought up <laughs> playing basketball. He's like that's just ridiculous. Yeah. But he said this is what's best for this player in this team. Look how the fans are reacting. Let's do it. He said at the end in Houston, I probably wanted to get up and down more, but. We had Yao Ming. You put him on the block, and that's our best chance to win. And understanding that, not and, not trying to put your style and your thoughts on a group of guys, understanding the group of guys that you have and working around and adjusting that. your style. Yes. That's where I think yes. so many coaches fail. And and ultimately, and and I, and I don't want to diminish him whatsoever. Tom Thibodeau deserves a lot of credit for where the New York Knicks are, mm-hmm. but history says the and and I was reading. You know, he's I, I, I think I read his, this morning. He's like softened up mm-hmm. his thing mm-hmm. because he. 
Thibodeau has to adjust. Mm -hmm. Or this this nice little resurgence Nick story is going to be over in about a year and a half. And yeah. Julius Randle's going to be asking to play somewhere else, or he's right. going to be on the oft injured list because right. Tom Thibodeau still practicing them three hours a day. So right. that, but, but, but there's something to be said for a guy who can walk in and uh, implement a style while still allowing guys to be themselves. Right. Now this New York Knicks team may not know who they are yet. You know what I mean? Which is part mm -hmm. of the reason that Tom Thibodeau was successful in year one. Mm -hmm. Now with Luke Walton here in this roster here, He's got to figure out. They've all got to figure out. Monty McNair's got to figure out the same thing. The way that this team played defense this year, it can't last. Right. He has to start making a mark, whether it may, or maybe it's Rex Kalamian has to make a bigger mark. Or let's go to the first line, and I know that this made you happy, even though you didn't react to it. What was the first thing he said? Well, you've got to have talent. You got to have talent. You've got to have the right <laughs> roster there. But we look at this roster and go, okay. Post All Star game, this roster really isn't that bad. We know that it needs adjustments. We know that this isn't a playoff in the sense of a best of seven mm -hmm. playoff team, mm -hmm. but we also don't think that they're terribly, terribly far away. Right. So right. you've got to get those horses in there, and you've got to. And this is this is where it falls on Luke now. Luke is secure in his job. He's got to find what his style is and, and, and implement that onto this team while still letting the team be themselves. And the other thing that he said that, um, you know, I kind of perked up with is he's talking about you got to give people time. You got to give people yeah. time. And as much as people don't like to hear it and don't like to listen, you got Lee, Leezy in here talking about how um, Tibbs, you know, the players are saying that Tibbs have changed a little bit. He softened up. You mentioned it as well. He had to learn that. He had to learn okay, how I want to go about things may not be best for this group of guys or just coaching in general. Like I've got to learn to go about things a little different. And I think you can grow as a coach and you can learn as a coach, just like players learn throughout their time in the, in the league. We say what we talk about it all the time. Sitting in that seat next to the big chair is a lot different than sitting in the big chair. And if mm -hmm. you get put in that big chair, there's going to be some things like, oh, man, maybe I wasn't prepared. For she didn't have to deal with before. Yeah. And, 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 no, and nobody in any walk of life handles things the first time perfectly every single time. So will Luke adjust? Will he learn? I don't know. But I don't think I also don't think you're going to figure that out in two years in two crazy years at that. Maybe Luke's thing is maybe and, and you know, Captain Sable, we have a good time with that. But I, I'm just having real talk. Maybe his thing is like, man. You know, I'd like to implement some stuff and work these guys along in practice. Well, everybody's talked about how they hadn't had to practice and, the, and they weren't able to practice this past year. We don't know what the deal is with him, mm. but the point is you got to give people the opportunity to learn from their mistakes, try to correct them. And has it even been, it's been two full years. Well, that's it's been, been two seasons. Yeah, I was about to say, and, 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 and that's kind of, that's kind of the thing where, you know, we, we, we talked about this leading into, you know, the announcement that, 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 that to the news that James Ham broke on Monday regarding the Kings keeping Luke Walton was he hasn't played an 82 game season. He hasn't played a season in which he could legitimately go a month and a half and not practice. Mm -hmm. He 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 hasn't played that. You know, I think they played. I think I mean, the season was very close to wrapping up on on March 11th. Um, mm -hmm. There was still time left in the season. There were still things to you know, to, to determine and play out. Um, that was for the most part, a normal schedule, but that was his first year here. Right. Um, again, I, I'm putting my trust more in Monty and less in Luke. That's you know what I mean? Good. If, if Monty <laughs> says Luke is the guy, Monty knows better than I do. Okay. Luke is the guy. You better show me because mm -hmm. now, you know, like Rick Edelman was talking about him. Now you've got the time. Mm -hmm. You know, now you've mm -hmm. got the time and it's up to Monty to do the other thing that Coach Adam was talking about. You've got to get roster. You've got to get the right roster. You've got to get talent on this team. Right. And then allow Luke to be able to do what he does. It's great that it's great that the players like Luke. Right. It, it, it really is. I, I don't. Does Rick strike you as anybody's buddy? I'm sure Rick had fantastic relationships. Right. And this is a question we can ask Pete Youngman. I'm sure Rick had fantastic relationships with the roster. But I've often said, I, I feel like Vlade, when he hired Luke, he was hiring a player's buddy because Dave Yeager wasn't their buddy. Right. And <laughs> you need someone in the middle. 
you need someone who can who can relate to the players, who could talk to the players, but you also need a guy who the players will listen to. Mm-hmm. We know the players aren't listening to the coach, and we know this because of Luke Walton. Luke Walton has said, this is your favorite line to quote from the year. I don't know if my game plan is good, but I know they're not doing what they ask or mm-hmm. what I ask. I don't know uh, if our defensive stretch, we're asking them to stay in front for two or two, three dribbles. They can't do it. Mm-hmm. They're not listening to him. There's a disconnect somewhere, and that's that's what this offseason has to be spent doing is fixing that disconnect. Here's the other thing. Otherwise, it's going to be another year and another furious fan base come next March, April, May. And you and you're and you're completely right about that. Here's the other thing that Coach Rick Edelman um talked about that I want to get your opinion on. And I'm just asking questions. I'm not trying to stall nobody out, but he said you got to identify what your team strengths are and what they do and, and accentuate that and try to get by with the other stuff. Do you think it's a situation where Luke said, because it isn't, it actually isn't even Luke. There's been multiple people who have looked at this, you know, relative group of the Kings is that they, they I can't do a whole lot defensively. They're not good. They don't put it together. Did he look at them and say, we can't do a whole lot defensively. We can't score. So let me try, let me see if I can get by on that, and we and we work on the defense as we go along. Do you think that was more the case this year? It, I I guess because what what do you always say? The team can score, mm-hmm. right? And and that in in a lot of the speed the, you you talk about understanding your personnel. There's obviously something Luke understands. It's the same thing that Dave Yeager understands. Is that De'Aaron Fox has the unique trait of speed. Mm-hmm. And and when you watch him on a basketball floor, you also see his his speed and his quickness is different than other people who are fast in the league. Like he is very unique in that category. So running, you have to. And Buddy is actually a great guy for this because Buddy runs, he mm-hmm. moves, he gets up and down the floor. But we could go back to uh, a, a a thing that Dave Yeager said is Dave Yeager had to keep things as simple as possible on the defensive end. Mm-hmm. Because they didn't understand anything more complicated. Right. It appears they still don't. So whether that's a teacher problem or a student problem, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Or but you've had two teachers but, in right. Dave Yeager and in 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 Luke Walton both talking about. And I don't know if Luke tried to make the defense more complicated. I don't know if he tried to ramp things up defensively, but it felt like it never hit a stride until the end of the year, which I don't I don't know what stock to put into that the way they play defense at the end of the year. But what happened at the end of the year is they got new personnel. And that's Yeah, but that wasn't the last two weeks of the season that they got new personnel. The new personnel was playing in different roles those final two weeks, mm-hmm. which maybe there's something to be said for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but I, then but at that point you've got to start looking at who wasn't in the lineup. Yeah. And I don't think anybody sure. wants to do that. Look, if they if they ain't looking. I'm talking about the Kings and I'm talking about the individual players. They need to be looking. Well, maybe that's more saying, like they need to feel some type of way, to be honest with you, and either get with or to get lost. And, and, that, and that's from my guy five, who I love, but five. I'm not saying it's his fault. No, He's I hear you. be able to say, man, I got to get to their feel like I kind of feel like we collectively as a media were kind of tiptoeing around that yesterday, mm-hmm. but no one flat out asked him. And mm-hmm. that's a tough, that's a, tough almost unfair question to ask because there were a lot of missing pieces and to spring it all on to Aaron Fox right. that would have been a ballsy move from some yeah. member of the media to be uh, like hey how come everything if, was better when you were gone I don't know if I have those great fruits and, 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 and because it's unsubstantiated <laughs> is, is part of the problem you just look at the total picture I think Ponte Hill is going to join us we'll take this phone connection who really knows the conversation continues on Twitch and YouTube we'll be back with more dealing with KC next on Sacramento's number one sports station ESPN 1320 Oh man. oh man, thank Coach y'all for that. Adam, Yo, that was man. That was that was that, that was, was legit. Really cool. I think I saw Danny in San Francisco reemerge. Wow, what a what a day for us. <laughs> <laughs> Danny was tuning in. I'm gonna make sure there's Rick Adelman here. <laughs> we'll make sure not Rick make sure I've been at Rick Battleman. <laughs> Rick Battleman. Man, he was he was freaking great. Man, Did y'all great. was that like it, you know I'm, you know I'm insecure. Can y'all give us a pat on the back? Was that good? Okay, there it is. That's that's what I needed to hear because I I really didn't know what we were gonna get from Rick, and he yeah. seemed appreciative and talkative, and that that was that oh, was good and, stuff. And, and, and oh, there, 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 there's our guys. Thanks, Deuce and Mo. 
cool. pulling back the curtain a little bit. So m- my situation, that one wasn't the internet. It's something with interviews and other people on where the, there's something going on with my mic that we haven't quite figured out, but it wasn't the internet. What do you mean? Like, oh, they were, oh, Kenny's underwater again. No, Kenny's no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not it. That's, that's, that's not yeah. it. I don't know why that hasn't been addressed yet. Yeah. Uh, it has something to do with the way something's connected in the studio. Yeah. And um, it's on that's the why on the radio, I think there's no, on the radio, there. there's no problem. It's only, yeah. we were trying to, <laughs> We were trying to fix Kenny's sound when the internet is bad. What we were trying to give you was the the box that we use that goes over the air. So no matter how bad Kenny's internet is, it's perfect <laughs> over the air. We were trying to give you that sound on the stream, but all it did was created a, a big... Again, remember, we've been doing this entire operation since August 17th. What they say, tape and bubble gum? Here. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, yeah. That's kind of we 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 figuring it out. One very soon, I won't sound like that with other people on the on the call. Very soon, we're gonna figure it out. Yeah, I'm so glad y'all dug that man, and and the social media that response awesome. has been yeah. That's 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 big. Yeah, that, that was, was big. Really that was big. Cool. And just uh, like, I I don't mean to drop an inside line on everybody. I'm still agitated at those same eight people. <laughs> those same eight people. <laughs> like y'all got to be kidding me, man. What are you doing with your life? Some of y'all might be able to figure that out. I'm not going to confirm nor deny uh, what I'm talking about, but some of y'all might be able to figure out what those eight people are doing. Oh, man. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Bonte about to join us here. Oh, man, that was so good. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we're going to speak this phone. Uh, What's up, Matt? Oh, Matt, glad you in here. Oh, man, appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. That's yeah. so dope, man. That Thanks, was really Mrs. Cool, Mac man. 10. Mac we'll get 10 that. Is the lick west side is the click. I got to say that every time I see her. Yeah, for, for real. Um, Jesse, let's let us let us get the uh, audio of Rick without the stream, and I'll put together some, some clips that way. Okay. <laughs> rich rich you wild <laughs> oh man Yo, that's wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right about that big dog you're right about that yeah that was a tough one man that was tough but it was the right move Yolanda Griffith tomorrow, by the way. No. 1230 on the stream. That's going to be dope, too, man. Yeah, that's going to be legit. I can't wait to see her. She was, you talk about intimidating people. She was one of the people on the team who I was, like, nervous to meet. She, <laughs> she has, aura. she's a sweetheart, though. Like, she yeah. is just a, like, she became one of the people I was closest with. Appreciate everybody who came in for the Rick Adaman conversation uh, and are hanging around here. Uh, Bonte Hill going to join us here in just a second. I know Bonte is ready. I just want to mention Yolanda Griffith is going to join us as well. Yolanda Griffith, uh, also part of the 2021 class of uh, the Basketball Hall of Fame. She's going to be with us on the live stream tomorrow uh, at 1230. So that's going to be a blast. Make your plans to be with us on twitch.tv slash ESPN 1320, youtube.com slash ESPN 1320. And if you missed our conversation uh, with Rick Adelman, you can uh, watch it on those two streams, as we mentioned, Twitch and Uber. You can use the Odyssey app and just use the rewind feature. And here we go. For the second time today, the first (laughs) guest in show history to join us twice. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you... The host of Warriors pre and post game talk over on NBC Sports Bay Area, a fellow Black Bottle boy, and of course, yes, 95 sir. 7 the game. Ladies and gentlemen, Monte Hill. Hey, Monte. I'm a little nervous right now. You got off the sidekick, you got off the sidekick, and that sound good. 
<laughs> you got a you got a you got a tough act to follow, Bonte. I'm not lying, but we had some uh, we had some great fun at your expense. Thanks for calling us back, man. We know how busy you are today. And and we were talking about the, the the big fight appeal of the Lakers and the Warriors tonight. And uh, right as you cut off there, you were laying pretty heavy into the Lakers fan base. Would you like to continue? Because I don't think anybody's going to turn their nose up at that. <laughs> yeah, first, first of all, thank you. Uh, I've just gotten back from Star Theory. I'm back in the next <laughs> And I deserve to get roasted by you guys. I deserve all the heat. No cap. As a kid. I deserve all the heat, man. Because having a JT cell phone is the worst in the world. What is the point? Hey, hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, man. Oh, yeah, it's awful, man. It is a real radio show. So I apologize. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hey, I don't apologize to Lakers fans. Like I said, they got the ugly shade of purple. King's purple is the better purple in California. All right, number one. LeBron versus Steph. LeBron's one of the best, five best players in basketball in the history of game. Triple doubles, champion, MVP, all that stuff. But the crime that this guy does, especially over the last seven years, what's this light skin dude come in? Hey! Hey! You know how it is for light skin folks. <laughs> whether it's Kendrick Perkins, whether it was Kitty Caraway, Stuff. You've been doing it all year. Cut it out. But Danny brought up a good point. He's just setting up the narrative. So if he loses the step, it's, oh, well, I lost the MVP. But if he beats them, you know, this is part of the toughest road we've, anybody's ever had to travel. I beat the MVP and had to face him in the first round. I see what he's doing, Bob. I see what he's doing. Oh, dude, he's been cooking this up for weeks. And then Jared Dudley came off the top rope and said, you know, if we defend our championship, Philadelphia, 
I don't like to work with the white four where, oh, we got to go this way and that way. And like Steve Kardashian, I'm going to change the street. Oh, well, we got to change the street. But if you go here, there's standards. I'm so tired of the Lakers, man. I'm already tired of them. And we're not even at 7 o'clock yet. <laughs> Bro, I don't know if you're going to make it to 340. <laughs> to be honest with you, fam. I, I'm, man. Wow. So, let's 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 try let's try this. You do realize the the, the team that you're going to do the pre and post show for, the, you know, the morning roast, 957 the game, all that stuff. You know, it 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 centers around the Golden State Warriors. You know they got a guy who is equally as obnoxious as LeBron James and more, more. fractionally as good. Just in yeah, Draymond just Green. Just say he's more obnoxious. Who's that? Who's that? Who is that? Is he Draymond? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know what? Please, look, I'm going to let you hurt it. Hey, look, we got a lot of things. I'm going to lie to y'all. When he comes out, he starts talking, and I'm like, say, this is cool, man. And he's got to come out and talk about, hey, I'm the greatest defensive player of all time. And I'm like, whoa, well, buddy. You ever hear this guy who did it? You ever hear this guy who did it? I see him dragging off the weak side because he's defending the top guy. Chris Buckley is the greatest of three. I don't want you on drumming, no damn well. Drumming doesn't have a post move to save his life. I don't want you to try to guard the slow at the three point line. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's your man. All right? There's no duck and cave tonight, Joy Bob Green. I'm serious. I'm like, oh, oh, you're the greatest defensive player ever. You can get the ball chase. <laughs> How does Kate tolerate you and Joe at the same time? I mean, look, he served up. He served up. You know, I love Danny. You know, I love uh, Kate. We in here, out here in Sacramento, it's damn near a lose lose situation tonight. I'm just going to say it, okay? <laughs> I'm just going to say it. It's a lose lose situation, right? So there's that. Number two, now we've heard Monte go on. We've heard Monte go on in on LeBron James and talking about everything about the Lakers. Monte, you want to tell the people who you think is going to win tonight? I mean, they're the to come out of the It's all entertainment. It's great for business. Like, ratings are going to be booming. I mean, uh-huh. it's for the Bay Area. Ratings are going to be booming. And I'd be five seventy day today. But when the ball gets to the ball, 
like, they don't look like 15 on you. They don't look like 15. Please don't get it, Darren. <laughs> from his three point line to the glass, AK the table. And it's like, they need to carry a score 40 tonight just to have a chance. So I just think the later will work. But just don't get it, man. Come on, man. Hey. Situation. You guys are hard up here talking about a capital elite. We still actually got about 2016 here. Uh, get off his damn Okay, damn hey, hey, no, we're not doing that. Back. We ain't doing that. We ain't going after HB. <laughs> we ain't going after damn HB. Damn <laughs> See that man alone. He's a saint. He's a... <laughs> no, what I want you to do, I want you to get some rest. You got a big night ahead. You got television duties, and you got to wake up early in the morning, man. Thanks for calling us back with a stronger internet connection uh, and a stronger phone line. We, you, you're, you're the best, Bonte. We appreciate you, my man. My main man, Bonte Hill. Hey, be location, man. We gonna have y'all on the road too, man. I promise you. Yeah, oh, let's go. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Okay. Big, hey, good luck tonight, okay? I mean that with all sincerity. Good luck tonight. I love Steph Curry. I don't want to dream on great, but I love Steph Curry, and I want to see good things for, for my man Steph. I got to take it from six to seven. I got to hype it, and then we'll talk it. It's going to be crossing my fingers. It's going to be a all right, boys, y'all have a good one. Monte Hill, 95-7 the game uh, in San Francisco, the morning roast. Uh, and, of course, Real the fellow. Tears again. Black tears again. Monte, <laughs> my goodness, man. He was he was on one. Um, a couple of quick things. Um, I, I, I want to play something for you. I want to read a text to you. Um, okay. I got permission to read it. Okay. Uh, hey, Damien, just wanted to let you know how much I enjoyed your conversation uh, with Rick Adelman this afternoon. Uh, good stuff. Hope all is well in your world. It's from the G-Man. Oh, Gary Gerald. God, you want to talk about legends. You how know, dope all, is that? all that other stuff be damned. All right. I know a legend when I see one. How dope Some is legend. that? That's appreciate you, G man. Legend. That's good stuff, man. We appreciate yeah. you. Uh, we lost a legend, though. Uh, Paul Mooney passed away. Paul Mooney is uh, probably your favorite comedian's favorite comedian. Uh, you can see a heavy, heavy Paul Mooney influence on guys like Dave Chappelle um, in the, in that storytelling, just real life form of of comedy. That's why Dave Chappelle, uh, you know, he had Paul Mooney as a big part of the the the, the first or not even the first season, but the existence of. Uh, the Chappelle show. Uh, he was R Richard Pryor's number one writer. Richard Pryor often considered uh, by many as the greatest comedian of all time. And when I saw that, that Paul passed away, I immediately flashed back to, I was like, I know I've done an interview with him. And I was at KSFM at the time I was doing a morning show with Willie Barcena, who's a, a very, very funny comedian. Um, he was kind of dabbling in radio, trying to give, you know, give, give, giving it a shot, but very funny guy. And, we had Paul Mooney in the studio. He was performing at the punchline. We had kind of wrapped up the interview. And Paul's not a guy who you you kind of get jokes out of, right? He's a guy who's going to tell stories. And ultimately, so, sometimes those stories make you think. Sometimes those stories make you laugh. But he tells you stories. And we had wrapped up. And he was like, hey, you know, the interview was done. He was getting ready. He was like, hey, I just got a note from, you know, my, my station in, in New York. Can we do, you know, one more segment together? And I've got to call the station in, in New York and do something. Mm -hmm. didn't tell us what it was and was like, yeah, whatever, whatever you want, it's fine. And so, and, and, and I want, I want to first preface this cause I'm going to play a clip of this conversation. Uh -huh. It's, 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 a, it's about a minute long. It's cringeworthy. This is d -Lo 17 years ago. I'm so one year. It, yeah. <laughs> Woo. But Paul Mooney says let's call new york i've got to talk to somebody and this happens Hi, sweetheart. hey good morning baby good morning we're here with um the reverend al green hey reverend ah love and happiness hey <laughs> what's happening man it's paul mooney how you doing i'm good paul it's been a long time hey but it's all for the good times baby oh, of course it is it's all for the Are good you times kidding me yeah. oh, we got the reverend al green on the I'm phone i'm so tired I'm out of a job now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm in California. Uh -oh. I'm in California with my crew, you know. My God, we're talking cross country here. Yeah, this is great. This so is, this is, is this live in New York on your radio show? Yeah. Yeah, we're at the station live here. Yeah. That's my partner, Ellen Clayhorn. Ellen, yeah. good morning, baby. Good morning, darling. 
I'm this t- is I, amazing. Uh, man, I'm gonna quit. Mr. This Mr. is my last day in radio Re- today. Re- Reverend Al Green, this is <laughs> Will, this is Willie Barcena. I just gotta tell you, my kids were born because of you. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. That's funny. <laughs> what a compliment. <laughs> And Reverend Al Green, this is D'Lo. I want to tell you that I was born because of you. <laughs> That's funny. Oh That's funny. I've had people to say to me, say, hey, I have three kids, and I know at least two of them. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, that was those uh, old KSFM wow. days, but it was, it was Paul Mooney and that wow. joke about being here because we had no idea we were calling Al Green so that we the the segment went on for like 10 more minutes I kind of cut that out because we were smart enough to lay out and let Paul Mooney and Al Green talk and uh from that moment on I interviewed Paul three other times all in different locations he all he remembered me every time again Paul Mooney is one of the most intimidating individuals you will Mm -hmm. will ever meet Mm -hmm. and you don't know how he feels about white people I didn't know how he felt about light skinned people. I didn't know how he felt about anything, but I wasn't going to do anything that even remotely pissed him off. And yeah. that, you know, that the interview we did was good. Like it, it was good. Like it was fine. Right. But that was the moment where it was like, if I ran into Paul in Las Vegas, which I did, or if I ran into Paul in Los Angeles at an, at a junket where you would expect to see, you know, mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. something like, like that, that's, he, he was always very, very welcoming and in his Paul Mooney type of way. Mm-hmm. He's not going to hug you and, oh, it's great to see you. Right. Oh, hello. It's it's like his, that's his delivery. That's his demeanor all of the time. And when I saw that he passed away this morning, it's like I, I've got to I, 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 I've got to find that clip of of uh, Paul Mooney and, and Al Green. And, awesome. and, and it's one of the, the, the dozen or so clips I have from my time at KSFM that I knew I think that's on. I think that's in my Apple library. I'm going to go grab that. That, that is that is awesome. Uh, Paul Mooney, an absolute legend, one of the great creative minds um, the world has ever seen. I have no problem saying that. One of the great creative minds of all time. And then you talk to Al Green. Uh, Queen <laughs> Dee, she, she jokes all the time that I'm just this big crooner, and I love my crooners. Mm-hmm. Al Green. Oh, come on, man. Come yeah. on, man. Al Green. Yeah. That boy is bad. Love yeah. me some Al Green. And the fact that you were able to um, talk to both of them at the same time and it was this big, you know, you didn't know what was going on. That's a dope moment, man. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I also realized I was really bad at this in 2004. Like, I just, God almighty, like listening. So that that wasn't bad. Like, that wasn't terrible. But as I listened to it, I was like, oh, God. Well, Damien, cringeworthy. That was your Luke Walton years. You got better. Okay. Give Luke Walton his time to get better. I, I, sure. You realize that was 17 years ago. <laughs> are you prepared? Are you prepared for this? Like there are times I go back and listen to this show and I go, what am I doing? Like, why didn't I shut up there? Why didn't I say this? Why didn't I say that? Like there's always to tie everything together. Rick Adam said there, you, you've got to have time to grow. Mm-hmm. Right. And listening back to those clips, like, thank God I grew because yeah. that guy wouldn't have made it today. Now, that clip wasn't about me. That was about Paul Mooney and, right. and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the dope interaction with Al Green and that cool little surprise that he gave us there. But you tie everything together. The Rick Adam conversation. Sure. Time to grow. Luke's been a coach for, you know, what, five oh, seasons yeah. now, three with the Lakers, two with the Kings. Uh, w- we need to see some immediate growth. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to trust Monty, you know, Rick Adaman's first line, the talent's got to be there, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to trust Monty to surround Luke Walton with the talent. And you know, that's my important thing is the talent. That's that's the number one priority for me all the time is the talent. And I've heard some people say that Monty hasn't done anything in his time being here and they've been underwhelmed. They're out. And there's a couple of guys on the on the King's Herald, I think, uh, <laughs> uh, who, who are like, I'm out on Monty. And I'm like, what the ah, hell are that's you talking early. about? That's a little right? early. Um, but I'm not out on Monty. I feel like every move he has made um, so far has been of value. That's what he's always looking for. And so far him and his team, because you know, there's other guys that work with him. They, it's a small sample size, but they seem to know talent and they seem to know how to fit the guys that would fit with what they're trying to do. And now on a grander scale of the off season, they were doing all this on the run. Mm -hmm. So now on a grander scale in the off season and the draft and things of that nature, um, I have no reason to believe that they won't find talent and they won't make the right moves uh, to get the right talent in here in Sacramento. So that's what kind of has me excited about the possibilities of what they can do this off season. I'm not excited yet. I'm accepting because I told you I would be, 
Mm-hmm. I'll be excited when I see Monty go to work. Yeah. I'll, I'll be excited he, I when think I he's see Monty go to work. Okay. And I think he's getting past Kelsey Siakam. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, I know we had Rick Adelman on today, and that was tremendous. If you missed it, uh, twitch.tv slash ESPN 1320, youtube.com slash ESPN 1320, or you can go to the Odyssey app, use the rewind feature. You could subscribe uh, to the D'Lo and Casey podcast wherever you get podcasts from, whether it's on the Odyssey app, Spotify, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts. We even isolate interviews. So if you just want to hear the Rick Adelman interview, or you missed part of it, or you want to hear it a second time, uh, we'll have it set up on its own track for you. Uh, and we're not done. Tomorrow, it's Deuce and Mo Day. Yes, sir. And Yolanda Griffith joins us on the screen. She'll be with us uh, tomorrow at 1230. Uh, So make your plans to be with us. If you're not yet on twitch.tv slash ESPN 1320, you can go follow there. If you're not yet subscribed to the ESPN 1320 YouTube channel, you can go to youtube.com slash ESPN 1320. And remember, the Lakers and the Warriors tonight Mm -hmm. on ESPN 1320. If you got business to attend to tonight, you won't miss a second of that game and don't miss a second of the show tomorrow. Deuce and Mo, Yolanda Griffith, join us uh, beginning at 12 o'clock on Sacramento's number one sports station, ESPN 1320. Oh, oh man, that show was funny. Two times I had real tears on it. Yeah, I had a laughter. And then you throw that in with the Rick Allen oh. and Jesus. Yeah, uh, it was the yeah, Rick, man. Gosh, that was good. Yeah. That was that was that was great. That was <sighs> great. I think we are. I think we are, Brian. I think we're on a little uh, a little hundred plus like streak here. That's big. Oh yeah. Let's go, baby. Let's oh, go. Yeah. Actually, I don't think we hit it yesterday. We might have to retroactively go back and hit some <laughs> of those thumbs up. Um, but that's good stuff, man. Thank y'all for today. Seeing, you know, with radio, I've, I think I say this to you guys all the time. With radio, you never know who's listening. But because of this stream, we can see who's tuning in to see us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if that's any indication of what's happening on 1320 or the Odyssey app, y'all have uh, y'all have done us something yes, special, indeed. man. So, yes, so thank y'all. I see some of y'all having some interactions with uh, with Danny in San Francisco. That that's 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 good <laughs> stuff. Uh, that's good stuff. Hey, shout out to Danny in San Francisco, man. Uh, I know you were nervous all day, but you you, you got one today, man. You did your thing. You he got that. he got yo too. He yeah, got yo. He, he shot me. He shot he the updated food. yo number, and we got that locked in. To Danny in San Francisco, man. He's doing his thing as always. Yes, indeed. And big up to the dopeones.com where you can get your DLO and KC merchandise. That's the dopeones.com. Use the promo code DLO KC for 10% off at checkout. That's D L O K C for 10% off at checkout. If you roam around a little bit, you might find some J Street Vibes merchandise. You might find some Be Heard merchandise. You may see that shirt that Kenny Caraway is wearing right now over on thedopeones.com. Look how good Kenny Caraway looks in that shirt right there. Uh, so go to thedopeones.com. Use the promo code oh, like D-L-O-K-C. The like the, aside from what's on it, the shirt. I love the shirt. I love it. Get I'm happy. Quality, you get that quality happy. when you go for the dope one, man. It's a good Yes, shirt. indeed. Yes, indeed. And uh, yeah. you get that quality here with uh, D'Lo and KC. So uh, thank you all for hanging out. Man, we've got another big show tomorrow with Deuce and Mo and 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 with uh, with Yolanda. And maybe, I don't know, maybe you see what Jason Jones is doing uh, for the 3 o'clock hour. I, 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 hey, we can talk to Jason. We can definitely talk to Jason. We'll make that happen. But John Bull, come on, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> well, man, I think he, I think he loves us again. I think he loves us again. We haven't seen Danny in San Francisco this many times in a day, much less a week in a in a while. I think, I think, ever since the the Forty ers drafted Trey Lance, ever since then, he's just been like, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm yeah. good. I'm yeah. I'm happy. I'm relieved. He, he he pops in every now and then. Every every once in a while, and he he got us Rick Adam today. <laughs> I actually got nervous watching the response to Rick Adam because when Deuce texted me like, "How the hell did you get Rick Adam?" and it was like, "God, I don't know." <laughs> I was like, I, "I don't know." Danny did it. Like he, did we, he pulled did it off. We get Rick Adam? I was like, "Well, we <laughs> we weren't sure until about two fifteen. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That was beautiful. We working on some. Uh, we working on some big. Dog. We're working on it. We are absolutely one thousand percent working on it. Uh, but we want to. We want to do something. Wow. 
<laughs> y'all are y'all are wild. That's funny. That is hilarious. Peyton, you, Peyton, you you're a trip too. You you a trip too, Peyton. Yeah, that's real talk. <laughs> that's real talk. All right, y'all got us laughing. We got podcasts to do tonight. Yeah, actually, I gotta, I gotta get I gotta get in the gym tonight, baby. There you go. Okay, Whatever, kids, let's go. All right, we're back with you tomorrow uh, at noon. Remember, y'all will be with us at twelve thirty. So be with us. Uh, we'll see y'all then. Thank you. Power.